What up, what up? This is David from the Five Six Kings. And guys, like in, in case there was any doubt in anyone's mind about Tony Hawk being a national treasure, Tony Hawk is a fucking national treasure. Tony Hawk has teamed up with Liquid Death. They're a, they're a weird company. It's just canned water, and it's not carbonated. It's just canned flat water. I don't know. I didn't think there was a need for that, but it is. And Tony Hawk's teaming up with them. And together, they're making 100 skateboards, selling them at $500 a piece. And the big cool thing about them is that Tony Hawk's actual blood is mixed in with the paint. This is the most bananas fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. He's mixing his blood in with the paint on the skateboard. And people are like, who doesn't want Tony Hawk's blood? I've wanted it my whole life. I get it. I get it. So far, we've made $0 off this podcast, so I can't justify trying to buy a $500 skateboard. But I get it. Tony Hawk is a genius. And it got me thinking, Subway, what the fuck are you guys doing? We need to wheel out, twenty before the end of 2021, we need to wheel out the new Tony Hawk Liquid Death Sub. Where there's like a, like a red sauce on it. That every, every bottle of the sauce has a little bit of Tony Hawk's blood mixed in it. I think every, every Subway sub should have Tony Hawk's blood sauce on it. I think it's crazy that you guys didn't... The second you saw this liquid death thing, you should have been like, oh, we got to get his blood. We got to get his blood on our sandwiches. People need to be consuming Tony's blood. And it's crazy, Subway. It's crazy that you haven't thought of it. It's crazy that your free advertiser is the one coming to you with this. But you know what, Subway? I'm happy to do it. Because you're good enough for Tony Hawk. You deserve his blood. And you're good enough for everybody listening. Subway, please. Not only not only give us money. But please give us Tony's blood. <laughs> That's the Paul Beach County album All my Paul Beach County niggas Y'all put them fucking guns in there Fuck them sis Put up the Paul Beach County That's where I'm from Where niggas get gunned down And left slumped Put them guns up a fucking round This ain't accounting for you bitches To come around What up? What up? And welcome to another episode of the 5-6 Kings Podcast My name is David Breen with me, as always, my close friend and co-host, Braden Bullard. Braden, how are you, man? Dude, I am. I'm. I'm doing good. I'm a little. Uh, uh, how do I say? Um, how you say cucumber? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no this this uh, this movie gave me you know nightmares last night. So um, as it should. So I'm excited as to break it, it should down. Give give everybody. And you know. I don't want. I guess maybe I should say this. It, it, it's not spoiling anything. You're, you're gonna see Russell Crowe's face everywhere. You're always gonna see it, and you're gonna think about what you could have done for your fucking boy. Thank you for bringing that up because <laughs> I actually don't see Russell Crowe's face. I see Corbin's face. <laughs> this is this is one of the other founding kings of the Five Six Kings, Corbin, and and yeah, yeah, it's very dark, very fucked up, Corbin. I, <laughs> So, is, oh, is this nightmare a real thing? Do you have no, a no. nightmare that Corbin was no, no, no. Cabin? no, I was kidding. That would have been amazing if you were like, I had a nightmare that Corbin was fucking Russell Crowe. It's yeah. crazy. No, but, dude, something, it's not that I see that this, like, Russell Crowe is Corbin. It's just, like, there's <laughs> just, like, little mannerisms and, like, the look and shit, like the beard, I think it is. Something, bro. I'm not trying to try you, Corbin. Corbin's dude. a super sweet kind of guy, you know, like. He's sweet, he's funny, and he'll fuck you up, but it's just, it, he he doesn't really, honestly, in any way, shape, or form, act like I mean, fucking clear, Russell Crowe clearly, he, clearly, there's something there for you. There's it's some like, there's some kind of trauma, and that's <laughs> no, why, like, no, no, that like dude, because there, this is, this is a crazy character. You didn't like, see Corbin at all in, in Russell Crowe? Not Crow? even a little bit. Oh, fuck. Now not I feel even bad. a little bit. Yeah, you know, I got to speak my mind when we're on the podcast, and, you know, I got to tell her how it is. Sorry, Corbin, don't take it personally, bro. It's, it's almost a compliment. This is one of the best actors to ever do it. 
Um, it's not really more it's his not a compliment. If, if Corbin was an actor, if Corbin was like trying to get in movies, and he's like, "Oh, thank you for comparing me to Russell Crowe. That's really cool." Yeah, no, you're comparing this fucking crazy psycho. Character. But I'm not, uh, there's but I'm not... nothing about it. Russell Crowe did the part well. That's yeah. why it's believable that that guy was crazy. But that's not what I'm comparing. And you're like, that's what reminds me of Corbin. It was more of just like the look of the character, like not, <laughs> not like <laughs> Russell Crowe looks rough this movie. <laughs> no, no, like just and. Like, just in the face. Like, it was, like, the facial hair and stuff like that. And, like, small mannerisms with the face. Not, like, his whole body appearance or him acting like a psycho. That's not what I mean. I just mean, like, little facial features kind of reminded me of Corbin. <laughs> so, so Corbin, don't take it personally. Corbin, but, uh, if you're listening, I got to know what you did to Braden. This is great news. That Because this is. Well, no, no, what Corbin did to you at some point in your guys' life. I could tell you to, what he did. To where, to where you got this. Let's, I mean, let's hear it. All this. right. So one time me and Hoff or me and Corbin were at uh, right across his neighborhood. Is that PGA National or what? Not PGA. Uh, the, the football fields. P- PGA National. Yeah. PGA National. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So not right across from his neighborhood. His, neighborhood. his old neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had to go like over the bridge. And yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right across. Yeah. So it, it's very close though. But um, so we go there. We're probably like 12 years old and it's like raining and lightning out and everyone's who was playing so it's like hundreds of people at, you know on, on the sidelines and Corbin's like let's go race to the 50 yard line let's see who makes it there first I'm like bro I'm gonna smoke you he goes okay oh, well hold on what's that over there and bro I totally got sold I'm like what I look over to my right this man trucks the fuck out of me I'm talking about lowers the shoulder to my blind side from where I'm not looking now trucks me and it's like raining i eat shit so hard puddle of fucking water going everywhere and he just takes off running going to the 50 like Haha, i'm gonna fucking beat you so he beats me he gets to the 50 like a, uh, like two feet before me but doesn't realize that i was running after him because it's raining so you don't hear like me come in and everyone in the crowd you just hear he knocks the shit out of me everyone goes <gasps> like dude that's all you hear and i'm running after him he gets to the 50 he's like yeah right as he turns around i come and fucking smack him and when I mean smack him, I truck the shit out of him. And this is Corbin. He's a big kid. So he goes fucking landing into the water because all the, the field was flooded. And everyone goes, <gasps> and after that, we wrestled a little bit. And it was super entertaining for everyone in the on the sidelines. And that's a little, little bond between me and Corbin moment right there. He so, knocked the shit out of me. So, I knocked the shit out of so him. So that whole story just sounds like you wanted to brag about Corbin getting a head start and you almost winning the race. No, and no, no, no. then... No. You knocked the bigger kid down to the ground. I felt. Let's start this movie. Yeah, you didn't like your, it. Your weird braggy story. Oh no! no oh, no, no, man, no. I was so close to catching him, and then I knocked the shit out of him, bro. I trucked him. It was. And then it was, we wrestled. Yeah. Why are you so afraid of Corbin? Was the question. Hmm. Probably because of all those knives in his room. <laughs> let's you know, let's start. Let's start. <laughs> all right, dude. So. We we taking it from the we're doing our reviews last doing the reviews last yeah okay okay so start with the say maybe the budget want to do the budget let's do the budget all right let's so here. so guys I don't if we said the name of this movie I think we've just talked I thought maybe we said I don't think at any point we've said the name guys we're doing Unhinged starring Russell Crowe yeah Karen Pistorius no relation to Oscar Pistorius and something kid the kid's first name is something I don't care what it is. Last name's Bateman. No relation to Jason Bateman. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, Unhinged. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a thriller thriller. Came out in 2020. What was the budget, Braden? What? Uh, yeah. I would have thought, once again, it would be it would have been lower, but um, $33 million budget. Sounds about right. What do you, cause what do you think they pay Russell Crowe? And then there was, there's a lot of explosions. Yeah, you're right. A lot, I, I a honestly, lot of car crashes. I honestly think they probably paid him like $10 million. Yeah, like a big chunk of that went to him. Yeah, for sure. Um, but they ended up grossing worldwide um, $44 million. So not – They made, made, a, not 11, a, they made $11 million. How rich are you to where you're – you're scoffing at well, people making an $11 million profit. That That's not what I'm doing. It's more of like – Usually when they put down a certain budget, they're probably looking to reclaim more than – like to put down $33 million to make $11 million is probably more of a risk if that if they knew that was the outcome, you know. They like made what, an $11 million profit. They got their money back plus $11 million. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just that saying. Is, I'm sure most production companies would probably want more if they're investing you know, thirty three million. Yeah, yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, invest in thirty three million. The movie during a pandemic is when this came out too. And, and middle middle of the <laughs> pandemic, no one's going to the movies. So, guys, if you don't know much about this movie, what a perfect time to to have a movie like this. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was great. And it it was set up in L.A. Was was that Los Angeles? That was so. It was clearly shot, filmed, took place in New Orleans. Oh shit! But at one point, so I was going to do this when we got there. At one point, they're on the road and they're like, "Oh, we're heading southbound on I ninety five. I was like, "No, you're fucking not." I-95 doesn't go through New Orleans. Uh, I, did, fucking, I didn't hear that. Before. I was like, why are you going to clearly like show roads in New Orleans, show like, oh, this is where they shot it. Okay. I recognize where they are. And, but, you know, we're heading on a road that's 100 miles away from where New Orleans is. Yeah, you know, I didn't – when I went through New Orleans, it, you know, it wasn't, I would say, um, from like the, the aspect when they were shooting a lot of the, the, the road scenes and a lot of the city scenes, I don't, I don't remember like – the city like that to where it made me think it was L.A. So because how packed it was and everything. They were never in, like, the French Quarter, like, at, like yeah. Jackson Square or on yeah, Bourbon exactly, Street yeah. or anything like that. But they were – I recognized the freeway, like, the surface streets that they were on. And I Googled it. It was shot in New Orleans. Nice. I saw, yeah, like, yeah. It, it was recognizable. Yeah. So but, so, But fuck them. Yeah. So really what we're talking about is how congested, like, the, the city and the traffic was in, in the city, which is why. Would, uh – Let's talk. Let's go to award season. It's got to be a lot, <laughs> dude. I mean, right? It's got to be a lot. Yeah, let's hear it. All right. So, uh, yeah, one nomination, zero wins, but uh, one nomination for People Choice Awards favorite drama movie star, Russell Crowe. Who the fuck won? Uh, this was in twenty twenty. People Choice Awards favorite drama movie star. Let's see. Hmm. You know, like, it's probably Robert Downey Jr. or some shit um, for, like, Endgame, if I had a a guess. Well, fuck your guess, man. All right. Let's get it. Let's see. Let's see. But, yeah, you know, surprising. You would think it would be, like, 40 fucking wins or some shit. Lynn Manuel Miranda was named drama Ugh. movie star of 2020 for the People's Choice fucking, Award. It's the dude from Hamilton. Uh, okay. Lynn Manuel Miranda. Mm. What did he did he win it for Hamilton? Um, did he do some other for top bullshit? drama film? Yeah, or no, yeah, for Hamilton. Yep, 2020. It's, it's a fucking Broadway show that they were there. Like, Fuck that. I resent that. I'm writing the people. I'm writing them a letter that Russell Crowe should have won. Yeah. And it should have won Best Picture at the Oscars. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's, right. Uh, let's let's talk reviews. Yeah, it says it here, too. Yeah. Wow. I think it'd be, you know. Who else would you? you who'd you Nobody. say? Nobody? Oh, okay. Nobody. Russell Crowe, and that's it. Yeah. True that. Yeah. For everything. <laughs> it was a really good performance. So if you guys haven't seen it, definitely go check it out because Russell Crowe kills it. Let's hear some reviews. Want to hear some reviews? All right, so you want to start with uh, with us? What did like? What no, do you... I want to end with us. Okay, okay. So uh, IMDb gave it a six out of ten. Oh, fuck yourself. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a forty eight percent. Go fuck yourself. God damn, it just gets worse. Metacritic gave it a forty percent. Go fuck yourself. But them Google users, you know, they they're always one to kind of balance it out. They gave it a seventy four percent. Go fuck yourself. Braden, what'd you give it? I gave it. <sighs> Gave it a 7.1. Go fuck yourself. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been teasing it for weeks. I've been harping about it. I've been letting you know it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 10. (laughs) This is the movie that gets a 10 out of 10 from David Breen of the Five Six Kings. Greatest movie of all time. Russell Crowe was born to play this role. I could not... I've tried to speak more highly about this movie. I, I just can't. I, I just It just won't stop. I hit a ceiling, and I'm like, this is the highest you could ever talk about anything. It's unhinged. It's Subway. It's Tony Hawk. Nothing surpassing this for you? Nothing. This is like the, the is, epitome of cinema. I could star in a movie 
that I won an Academy Award for, and it won Best Picture, and I would say it is dog shit compared to Unhinged. Hmm. All it needs is like a Gary Oldman. No, it doesn't. It doesn't need anything. <laughs> 10 out of 10 means it's fucking perfect, Brayden. Hey, I, I always knew David loved this fucking movie, and I knew it was the 10. But look at that. Both of our mo- favorite movies back to back. That's the type of treats yeah, but we get better. All right? I don't, I don't want you to try. Don't make this about you, Brayden. This is about Russell Crowe, <laughs> and this is about Unhinged, all right? Interstellar was last week. We're done with Interstellar. This is Unhinged week. All right? And this, it's going to go off the fucking rails, guys, all right? Yeah, yeah. If he has, the if title he... is it's appropriately titled. This whole podcast <laughs> yeah, is going to be Unhinged. Yeah. Off the rails, unpredictable. Braden needs to stay in fucking line this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm wondering now since I uh, see Corbin so much as Russell Crowe, I wonder if it's going to start to grow on you too. No. You don't think you ever? No, not even a little bit. Okay, my bad. Blows my mind. You you let off the podcast. And you're like, I really like. I see a lot of Corbin in this. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't at all. That's crazy. What you're saying to me right now, dude? In the moment, I really saw it. You want to know when I really, really saw it? I mean, if you don't give away anything good, when he, yeah, yeah, when he, when you, you're, you're, you're no, nah, I, I don't trust you. We're we're gonna get to the because last week I was like, don't say the guy's name, don't say the guy, and you're like, it's this guy. You he's in nothing. And I was like, he's in fucking Homeland. He was the vice president's son. I don't want to hear what it is until we get okay, there. Okay. Yeah, we'll get good. there. You need to remember it. Okay, okay. All right, yeah. guys. <laughs> movie starting off. Russell Crowe is sitting in his truck. It's pouring rain. He's got a wedding ring on. He's fucking just popping pills. It's uh, they're painkillers. It, because it's like hydrocodone, a Percocet, something. It, it zooms in and says what it is. I forget what it is, but it's painkillers. And then he looks at his wedding ring, takes it off, tosses it in the back seat of the truck, gets out of the truck, goes over to the passenger side, grabs a hammer and a can of gasoline. He's in front of the house, if I didn't say that. And in the pouring rain, walks up to the front of the house and just starts hitting the door with the hammer. Lights start coming on in the house. Like, the fuck's going on? The fuck's going on? Goes in. A man comes up to him. Ross Crow just fucks him up with the hammer. Real bad. Like, hits him multiple times. The lady's screaming. She's like, no! Get the fuck out of here! No! He, he's just following her. We don't see it. But we hear some banging and we hear her screaming, stop. So, obviously, he fucked her up with the hammer. And then he's walking out, pouring the gasoline. Lights it. House is going up in flames. He gets in his truck, drives away. As he's driving away, house explodes. Guessing he he might have turned the gas on in the kitchen. There might have been a car in their garage. Who the hell knows? The house, house like, fully exploded as he's driving off. Yeah, and then, but I was a little confused. Like, who is this? Is this just, like, a very random victim? Or is this, like, maybe his... you you know we find out who it is, right? Oh, okay, okay. I fucking hate you, dude. Yeah, okay. yeah. We find we find out very soon who okay. it is. <laughs> so, at the time, you don't know who it is. You can make guesses and all that, but in like the next scene, we find out who it is. Okay. So, uh, the like opening credits start rolling, and it's showing a lot of like real fun. The opening credits were way too long. If I can yeah. make, oh, I only got two knocks on this movie. I-95 doesn't go through New Orleans. Opening credits were way too long. It was showing, like, road rage, car crashes, people fighting in the streets. Showing that just, like, people are restless. People are really, like... Yeah, like, city mentality. Like, how the city and, like, congestion of people can get to someone's mentality. Yeah, which made sense to show that in the opening credits. I thought it was cool how they did it. But the opening, it was like seven minutes long. Yeah, they were like resonating on it too long to where it made it seem like it were, they were trying to force you to feel a certain way rather than it just being like generic. Yeah, and they didn't need to force anything. Russell yeah. Crowe forced himself on us. Yeah. This whole movie. Yeah. And, you know, like, well, and then, I feel like I deserved it. Mm-hmm. And it might even be a little bit my fault. <laughs> and so I'm okay with it. Do do you um like it or don't like it when they have the credits, some of the credits in the beginning like that? Because that's what they were doing too. They were giving like credits during that. Yes, I don't mind that. 
Yeah, okay. I don't mind that, but like make it a minute and a half. Yeah, I think I think a yeah. big part of it too is like the credits were just rolling like too slow, like fading in and out of the per- people's names, which I think carried on the whole thing just a little too long. But yeah, I enjoy it too sometimes when they put the credits in the beginning and they have like a little yeah. montage or something. You know? I like, and so like it was cool to show like the. Like, all the stuff, like, to set up, like, hey, this is what the movie's way going to be about. Yeah, this is, like, the the whole energy and feeling of it, yeah. Yeah, but, like, it didn't need to be... And I, I might be exaggerating saying seven minutes, but I don't think I'm... Ex- shorter than that. But, but I don't think I'm exaggerating by a ton. No, no. no. It might have it been, like, five, five or six minutes. minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, it was a lot. And yeah. I was like, this is, let's wrap this shit up, guys. Yeah, so they definitely get you invested very quickly in the film. They, I think they do do a good job of, like... Getting you, well, I mean, into the feeling Russell, of like Russell Crowe murders two people with a hammer. No, exactly. And blows yeah. a house up right off the. Yeah, rip. I'm, 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 I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm not just talking about the the credits, the the beginning credits or anything. I'm talking about like the whole beginning of the film. Like they immediately set up how they want you to feel as the viewer, which yeah. is good. They did a great job at that. Which how they wanted me to feel was fuck yeah, I'm hyped. Yeah, I want to be pumped <laughs> for Russell Crowe and whatever. I was on that. I, I was I was hopping on board. I was like, whatever he wants to do this movie, I'm all for it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so uh, cut to Karen Pistorius, no relation to Oscar Pistorius. Brayden, do you know who Oscar Pistorius is? No. It's okay if you don't. I'm going to explain it. He's the Blade Runner. He's a South African legless runner who had like these like little metal leg things, and he was running marathons and stuff. This is like true story. Yeah, and okay. then he uh, he murdered his girlfriend, and like went to prison for it. But uh, what was the reason of him murdering his girlfriend? She was cheating on him with uh, I think a, a rugby well a rugby player. Because rugby's bigger in South Africa than legless running is. Yeah, I was going to say, so believe, it's a, is believe it, about it or rugby not, rugby or is it because he had both his legs? <laughs> 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 um, so he he murdered her, and then went to prison. He's going to get out at some point, which is crazy. South Africa. It's like if you go to prison for murder, it's like fifteen years. It's not life, which is you know what, good for South Africa. I mean, it's wild. I bet there's some crazy yeah, but, laws uh, that, like, you go to jail for life over, like, throwing – over littering, but, like, you murder someone's 15 years. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, – so I, I looked up Karen. When I saw her name was Karen Pistorius, I was like, oh, let's fucking – let's see if there's a relation here. <laughs> and she's from South Africa, and I got real excited, but it's no relation. I'm guessing Pistorius is just a common last name in South Africa. Yeah, I've never I'm, met a Pistorius, I'm, but neither have I. It sounds like got, a pretty cool. Last but we got name. two from South Africa. Yeah, two very famous ones too. Look yeah. at them. So she's asleep on the couch. She gets a phone call and answers it. It's her lawyer, and he goes, "Hey, your uh, your soon to be ex husband filed another injunction this morning." She's like, "Oh, great. What's he want now?" He's like, "He wants the house." Just of course he does. He's like, "I've already written up our objection." Just say the word, and I'm going to file it. And, like, she's quiet. He's like, what are you What are you even thinking about? He's like, you, he didn't work for the house. You weren't the house. And she's like, I just want this to all be over. Uh, he's like, you, you you need to let me file this. He's like, we're still on for lunch today. And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll have an answer for you by then. He's like, okay. Son comes out. He's dressed. Wh- Why was she sleeping on the couch again? We never find out. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing. She's on the couch. I, I don't. Yeah, I didn't maybe, understand maybe, that. maybe so she like, was in the moving phase or something like that it's, it's because like we, of divorce. We find out that her her brother and the brother's girlfriend live in the house, but I don't like you give them the master room. Maybe the, she's going through the divorce, living at her brother's house while she's getting no, a new it's, place. It's her house. It's oh. her house. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure yeah. it's her house because she she talks about the brother not chipping in rent and all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're no, like, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I, there's nothing about this movie that I'm going to be wrong about. I need you to know that right now. No, no, you're. Right? you're I know yeah. everything about this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember the brother saying that too, and I was like, well, this doesn't make sense." But yeah, so, son comes down. He's dressed for school, and he's like, "Hey," he's like, I'm, "You're not dressed." And she's like, "Is this not appropriate attire for your personal chauffeur?" And he's like, "You got a client this morning." And she's like, "No, I don't." And she looks at her phone. And she's like, "Yeah, I do." All right, that's fine though. I'm just gonna. And he's like, "I'm gonna be tardy again." She's like, no, 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 I'll, 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 I'll be, I'll be ready, and we'll go. One thing I, I don't understand why they set up her character to be maybe because of the divorce. I don't like why is her character the way, like why is she having these difficulties in life? Divorce. She's stressed out. That's what I'm saying. Like, but, but, all, but also like she's not, she's not trying. She's not doing a good job as a mother. 
Um, do you think they set that not, up? She's not to spending have, like, her money the best way. We'll find out so in a little like, bit. More stressed out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes um, sense. Yeah, it's uh, no, she does, she's not handling the stress as well as she could. Yeah, but that no, makes what, sense. Is what it is. is. Yeah. Um. So the son is in the living room. He or not in the living room. He's in the kitchen. He's sitting like the table. Yeah. He's watching the news, and they're talking about fires. R- Russell Crowe murdering those two people. Yeah. And the there's a neighbor on the news, which which by the way, any neighbors of mine, if I'm ever killed, not even neighbors, anyone who knows me, if I'm ever killed or I do something terrible that's in the news. Don't don't interview with the news and be like, I can't believe he's God, you know, like she you was so happy and then this happened. It's so bad. Like, fuck you. Unless unless so Braden, if you can profit off of it on the podcast somehow, if I die in like a huge tragic way and you can make money off of it, just do me one favor. Yeah. Do me one favor. If yeah. you can profit off it, just whatever I would have made off the profit and give to my family. Still take your cut. Okay. Absolutely. But profit off my is it, Yeah. Is it cool to like to oversell it? Like, oh, guys, like, uh, man, David died. And this is just so bad and terrible for me and like everyone that I know that like, you know, if you guys could just chip in a bunch of money, you know, that would just be great. Whatever you want to do to profit off. David told death. me right before as, he as died that as, it, as long as my half is going to go to my family. Yeah. yeah, you keep your other half. Like, it's got to be part of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, not just like you out doing stuff as Braden Bullard, uh huh, and then keeping half the money. Like, but say, I can like you, you sell can't your death. S- you can't say you're raising money specifically for my family, and then keep half. But if it's like as the podcast, you know, like it's tough. We have a death of David Breen. Like, however you want to do it, profit off my death, sure. But don't just do sad news interviews. Where you're like, I can't believe he's gone. I just. You know, it's been it's been two weeks and it still doesn't feel real. You know, like like doing <laughs> shit like that. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and that's what that's what the lady's doing on the news. And she's like, you know, she she had a restraining order against her husband. You know, he he has a drug problem and he he got fired. He got hurt at the auto plant and lost his job. Like they kind of just quickly give you a ton of backstory for Russell uh, Crowe. Yes, yeah, so that's how I missed. He it. got injured working at the auto plant. And this is in the background while they're in the kitchen. Yeah, lost his job right before his pension, and developed a, a painkiller addiction because he got hurt and lost his job. Probably his health insurance and was just like, oh, oh, so that was his can't. ex-wife. Yeah. Um. So it was his ex-wife and her new husband or boyfriend or whoever the hell that guy was. That he just murdered and blew up the house. There's another dude in the kitchen. We find out it's Karen Pistorius' brother. He's uh, he's like trying to FaceTime with his mom. She's real old and mom can't figure out FaceTime. He's like, I can't hear you. You got to hit the microphone. He's like, well, we'll talk later. And then he hangs up and goes and changes the channel. And kid's like, I was watching that. He's like, it's way too early for the real world, man. Just stop it. Uh, yeah, this mom, kid's like kid's watching fucking murder on. He's the like new, a like, super spaced out kid and guy, whatever, yeah. whatever age he is. I don't even know. You talking about the the brother, the brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was right. the The kid shouldn't be watching. No, like, yeah, yeah. But I'm just he doesn't need to start his day bit. with that nonsense. Yeah, no, no, no yeah, this guy right. murdered his ex wife. It's like six a.m., <laughs> yeah. seven a.m. Um, Karen Pistorius comes in. She's frazzled. She can't find her candy cane scissors. She finds them under a pile of newspapers, and she looks at her brother. She's like, I found them under your pile of trash. And he's like, piles, science is saying that piles are the most effective form of filing. And then his girlfriend comes out of nowhere, and she's like, oh, I was using those to cut coupons. And he's like, you're cutting coupons for us, babe? I love you so much. And he goes, you know, uh, I, I can't think of Karen Pistoria. Rachel. Yeah. He's like, you know, Rachel, you could uh, you could learn a thing or two about fiscal responsibility from Mary. And she, uh, Mary's like, I'm so sorry, Rachel. Like, she's trying to defuse it. She's like, I'm in Rachel's house. Like, don't yeah. talk to her like that. Yeah. Bring me into it. And she goes, no, nah, it's okay. I love you, Mary. But, uh, you know, if you guys are so fiscally responsible, maybe you can start uh, start chipping in some money. For rent. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm working on the business, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to live at mom's house, but you made us put her in a home. And she's like, we got to sell mom's house. We can't afford to take care of her. It's like she was getting lost in her neighborhood. And he's like, I get lost in the neighborhood. Those streets are like a big, big bowl of spaghetti. 
And then she tells her son, she goes, grab a granola bar. We got to go. And the son goes, I already ate. Which is just kind of like, they they just keep laying the ground. Like, the son was up and dressed while mom was asleep on the couch. He made breakfast, and she's like, you should have a granola bar. Like, that's a healthy breakfast. Uh, Like, just kind of just setting up, like, the son is, like, 12 years old, and he's the responsible one in the family. Yeah, which is kind of funny that... It, and it's shown because he's around all these almost like irresponsible people that he feels the need to be more responsible. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> the kid kills. He's like, uh, he's like that one chick in Brothers, the daughter, the older daughter. Yeah, can't think of her name. I that's, can't think of her name. That's either, that's yeah. what he kind of reminds me of. Yeah, he's yeah. the responsible one there. Yeah, yeah. So now they're driving to school. Um, his dad calls. Yeah, and. She's she's like giving him spelling. He has a spelling test that day. So that's how young he is. He's taking fucking spelling tests. This is like a weird time. And this is kind of like a side thing. But it's like a weird sidebar. No side thing. Just like fine. Side note. Sidebar. 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 Ah, yeah. Sidebar. yeah. Um, it's like a weird a- timing when, with phones. Because like you can't tell if it clearly seems like he's on a. On an iPhone, and it kept seeming like that to me. But then she's using like a flip phone from at one point. Dude, I hate, I hate you. This is such a weird side note. No, but it's like I'll, I'll get more into into the side note later on. But uh, yeah, come on, come on. What are you what are you jumping forward for? Well, I'm not she has an forward. iPhone at this point. She has an iPhone. Yeah, she doesn't have a passcode on it though. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's part of it. But. <laughs> She, yeah, it's like, she, some own, weird she owns an iPhone. There's nothing weird. Well, we'll get there. It's, it's, it's not weird. It's, it's not even a little bit weird <laughs> what happens later. So she has an iPhone. They're driving, and she's like, I need you to check. Uh, there's, there's traffic on the surface streets, and she's like, let's check the freeway. We check on the maps, and he's like, no, we can't do the freeway. And then she's like, just check for me. And he checks, and he points out that she doesn't have a passcode. And she's like, well, I almost crashed trying to open it the other day. Uh, we'll just, yeah, so let's just, just get rid of the passcode. That's the that's, that's the, the solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, it says the freeway's clear. And she's like, why is that a problem? He's like, we still can't trust it. And she's like, well, we're running late. I got to. He pulls over and goes to get on the freeway. Kid's dad calls. He answers it. He's like, hey, dad. He's like, we go into the game, and he's like, oh, sorry, bud, I, I can't. He's like, did you get tickets for the game tomorrow? He's like, I'm sorry, I gotta make my new boss happy. I gotta go out of town and do whatever, blah blah blah. And the kid's just like, oh, okay. And then the mom goes, it's very understanding of you, Kyle. You know, it's with new jobs like your dad's, it's tough. Like she kind of sticks up for the dad here, but for, then kind of gets on for, him. for the kid. She does it like, yeah, kind of like you're. It's, it's understanding of you. Your dad loves you. Whatever. Yeah. And then he's like, "Yeah, exactly. That's uh, well, we'll definitely do the next. We'll definitely do it. We'll plan on doing it when I get back." And she's like, "Well, we shouldn't make it a plan. Maybe more of a spur of the moment thing, you know, because plans fall through." And he's like, "Yeah, I just need to make the boss happy so I can get my own place." And then she goes, "And maybe stop relying on other forms of income. So like, quit trying to get money out of me during this fucking divorce and be a man and and work and make your money." And he's like, "Yeah, can we uh?" Can we talk? Can we talk about the uh, what, what I put through this morning? She's like, no, we're, we're pulling up to school right now. And the kid, kid does great here. The kid looks confused and then doesn't say it, but just mouths, no, we're not. Like, like he's like, why, why are you lying to him? Like, yeah, like he doesn't get what's going on. And he's and, and dad's like, all right, I mean, we'll talk later, but this isn't gonna resolve itself. This guy, we never see this guy physically, unfortunately. Yeah. This guy's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like this isn't going to resolve itself. I don't understand really what he means. Like there was like a probably a payment that he had to pay for like his child support or some shit. What, what was he talking about? Like no, because he filed that he wants the house in the divorce. Oh, and now okay. he's like, I want to talk to you about it. Oh, and she's okay. like, we're not, we're not talking right now. And he's like, well, this isn't going to resolve itself. Oh, uh, yeah. You're gonna have to do something about it, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just puts weird shit. pressure on her. Yeah. I want that house that apparently you worked for and got. Yeah, and is your mother's, right? Or was your mother's or some? No, no. There's a separate house that's her mother's. Oh, okay. This is a house that she she purchased. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I mean, they probably purchased it together, but. Yeah, what, so what, fucked what, up. Yeah. 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 We, so now they are hitting traffic. She gets a call from her 9 o'clock appointment, 
And she's like, oh, I'm just running a little late. We're hitting traffic. And the lady's like, eh, boy, you're always late. I can't do this. Get your shit together. You're fired. Hangs up on her. It's Deborah. It's the lady's mm. name. Fucking Deborah. And the kid's like, everything okay? And she's like, I just lost my best client. She's like, look at all this traffic. There's traffic everywhere. Do you know why? Too many cars. Too many cars. Too many people. And the kid, <laughs> the kid goes... Didn't you also oversleep? And she goes, I did. You're absolutely right. God, like, it's, a, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's like, well, poor me, poor me. And the kid's like, you could have woke up earlier. Like, you know, you could have been more responsible. so mature. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, you know what? I only listen to you from now on. How are we getting out of here? And he goes, you can get off the next exit, take surface streets. So that's what she does. Pulls up behind a truck. Camera nice truck. Pit. Camera pans over to the front of the truck, and we're like, "Oh, we've seen we've seen this truck before." Mm-hmm. And then pans back. They're at a red light. Light turns green. The right lane starts going. She's behind the truck. The truck doesn't go. She sits there for a second. She's like, "Come on, come on!" And then lays on the horn. Yeah. Pulls off. He still doesn't go. She lays on the horn again. Light turns yellow. She like pulls over. Honks orange. again. Orange. Yeah, it was yellow. What have I been driving? Yeah. I've been driving my fucking. It's crazy. I've been in cars my whole life. It's orange. Orange? Yellow? I think some of them change. I think well, not change, but I think some of them are a little bit different than others. But yeah, like yellow. Yellow. Is it yellow or orange? Oh fuck! I think it's yellow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be right back. We gotta look this up. But uh, you know, while you wait, go to Subway. And we're back. Uh, it was yellow. I don't. That, that was a crazy crazy like i don't know why i felt the need to second guess myself you know yeah so it's always been They're yellow. very close on the color spectrum it's always been yellow it'll always be yellow Braden. unless you go to like one of those really shitty old traffic lights then it then it might be orange, might be orange. all right who knows you know maybe let's they find, put the wrong let's find some orange ones yeah um but so the light's yellow she's honked real loud at the truck twice and now she's pulling around it and as she pulls around she lays on her horn and, going through the yellow light and, and does like a what the fuck like yeah thing. she doesn't flip him off but like throws her hand up and looks at the truck and then it turns red right, right when she goes through it um and right when she like it's like a weird kind of turn and when she through the light like she's kind of like turning through the light and then when um she gets through it she basically pulls up to a bunch of other traffic it's not like they were really going anywhere whether she missed that light or not <laughs> and uh so now she's still bumper to bumper traffic, and whoopsie daisy, big surprise! That truck fucking ran the red light like late too. It seemed like he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll go now." During like way through the red light, and then he just pulls up next to her, and this is the part that reminded me of Corbin. That's baffling to me. It's baffling <laughs> me. So they Russell Crowe pulls up. He's just staring. He looks rough. He's staring through his truck window. He rolls it down, and then he looks at the kid in the back seat, and he just points his finger down, like, hey, roll down the window. And the kid rolls it down, which bananas that the kid just like, all right, let's hear what this guy's going to say. Yeah. And this is what I said to you during the film uh, when when we were watching this, and I, you know. I didn't. I, didn't I, I still don't know, but I was like, is that blood on his shirt? It, I mean, it looks like it's like clear as day, like blood on his shirt to where like if I'm probably. Ta- yeah. And maybe it's like maybe from the angle, but, it, you know, it, it just seemed like it was noticeable to where if I'm like talking to this person, I feel like I would notice the blood and be like, uh, maybe I shouldn't be talking. Or, well, not like she was talking if my, shit. If but, my mom. Yes, yeah, she is. Kind of, um, yeah. We'll, but not we'll get, like, we'll get there. Yeah, she, we'll oh, get my there. God. She totally is. Get the fuck out of here. She's, out of, she's like, out of her mind and out of line. This whole this whole thing is her fault. For sure. <laughs> like, absolutely. What happens after this isn't. But, like, right here, it is her fault 100%. The sun rolls it down. Russell Crowe goes, I don't even get a courtesy tap. Ma'am? And she goes, the light was green. You weren't going. And he goes, you know what a courtesy tap is, son? And the kid shakes his head. He's like, and then he just goes beep beep on his horn. And he goes, "Real light, you know, like you're trying to get someone's attention." Miss, is that what you meant to do? She goes, "No, it's not." And the kid's like, "Mom, what are you doing? Just, just say yeah. Just say sorry." He's like, "You know, maybe I did zone out there a little bit. Been going through a little bit of a rough time lately." <laughs> 
So, um, and she's, oh, she says, well, join the club. Yeah. And he goes, well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry you're going through a rough time and I'm sorry if I did anything to make it worse. Now, if you could just apologize to me, we could hit reset. Or no, 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 sorry, sorry. He goes, do you accept my apology? And she goes, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> and he goes, great. Now, if you could just apologize. Like, he's weird. Yeah. But he's right. Like, you can never do this to a person. It's fucking crazy that he's doing this. <laughs> but I don't think he's wrong with anything he's doing. Like, it's crazy. That's yeah, why yeah. I love this movie, because this character is so fucking unique. But so, he goes, if you could just apologize to me. I think we can reset and be on our way. And she goes, I have nothing to apologize for. And he he starts getting angry. He goes, now, I don't think that's true of any of us. Now, is it? <laughs> the kid's like, mom, mom, please just apologize. She's like, no, I'm not apologizing. I'm fine. He goes, but that's the world we live in, isn't it? We all can't fucking apologize when we're in the wrong. You know, miss, I don't think you even know what a bad day is. You're about to find out. Yeah, it is so funny. Like, like this whole thing. I am like, my heart is racing during this. I'm so stressed out during this. But I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in a movie ever. Russell Crowe needs to only play this character for the rest of his career. <laughs> this is so fucking crazy and amazing. And guys, by the way, I watched this on a fucking plane the first time I watched it. I was on a plane. It was one of the options of movies, and I'm just freaking out this whole plane ride. <laughs> Dave's probably thinking, like, oh, there could be there could be a Russell Crowe in this plane. I don't How know. great would that be? <laughs> I'm apologizing to everybody on that plane. Immediately. Uh, no, and so when you when – you th- we're talking about Russell Crowe. Everyone's probably thinking, you know, Gladiator, some other films. Like, this, let me say, say for the record, if you haven't seen it, he is like – Three times the body weight he's, of his normal fi- or of his other films. So, I want to so, say so not three times. Yeah, maybe not three. He, but, he, I mean, he, he is. He's, he probably weighs like two sixty, at least. Like he's he's a big big at man. least. Like, like he for sure gained a shit. Which and not 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 like if it's for the role, bulk, not bulk. No, no, like no, yeah, he's he's, he's, he's fat. fat. He looks just fucking gross and rough. And I'm. If he did it for the role or a couple roles, then good for him. But if this is like his life choices and they're like, yeah, this fits the role, then I feel bad. <laughs> still good for him. Are you kidding me? No, yeah, yeah. These are his, he chooses to be that fat and he's like, I'll still, I'll find amazing characters I can do. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, good for right. him no matter what. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Look at my so, sympathy. Traffic starts going and Russell Crowe like speeds up, gets around, gets right behind them. Yeah, yeah, well, they they somehow found a way to get out of the traffic, the bumper bumper that they were in, and then he ended up, like, following them. So tra- traffic starts moving. Yeah, and then— Her well, lane starts moving. He's yeah. able to catch up to her. Well, he, like, drove off. He drove into the the middle of the median kind of thing. Well, it's not a median. It's, like, um one of those it's, roads. It's the middle lane. Yeah. I've gotten, I've gotten pulled over for driving in the lane that he drove in yeah. to pass cars before. Yeah. He did it with ease. Yeah. Drives in and gets in front of them. And then just pulls around and blocks the road. Slams on his brakes, and then they... Oh, they almost hit him. Yeah, they slam on their brakes. And then brakes. he starts going again. And this is when they start to realize, like, oh, this dude's <laughs> fucking serious. <laughs> <laughs> and he rolls, he, like, pulls over hard, slams on his brakes, and now he's just... It's a two-lane road that he's completely blocking, and he's just staring out of his truck window at them. Yeah, he's, like, probably, like, 100 feet in front of them. And I'm thinking... Oh, this would be fucking great if someone else just accidentally fucking hit him. No, it wouldn't. Well, not, there not would, for the movie. There wouldn't be a movie. Yeah. yeah but the like, movie would be, oh, Russell Crowe died but like, I'm 20 saying, like, when minutes into the movie. I'm saying, like, when you're when you're the viewer, though, you're like, oh, what satisfying karma would it be if this dude just... He I, does something like this and someone hits him. I was the viewer. And I did not feel that way. I felt That's like, the difference between I me and I felt you, like David. Russell Crowe was in the right... <laughs> With what he's doing, he is justified. What about all the other people trying to get to work that he's now cutting off Fuck because them. of... Fuck them. That's Rachel's fault. Everything in this movie <laughs> that happens is Rachel's fault. There's one thing we've learned from watching this. It's all her fault. Yeah? That was, was that the takeaway? Absolutely. Do you not watch this fucking movie? He says that a billion times. He's like, blood's on your hand, Rachel. 
He just keeps saying it. He's putting everything on her. <laughs> That's what the whole movie is. It's fucking wild. Yeah, I guess you're. I guess you're. I guess you're right that Russell Crowe's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So she pulls off and like takes a surface street and takes her kid to school. And like kid drops off, he's like, I, I'm gonna have detention because I'm tardy. Oh, but, dude, that that actually pissed me off. Because like, if I'm the parent, I'm gonna be like, dude, listen, we're, we're stuck in traffic. I got enough stress. I just lost my job. I don't need. Your little bullshit stress about you getting a little detention. I'm no, gonna fuck go- you. Fuck no, no, no. You. I'm gonna fuck go- you. No, fuck you. I'm gonna- if I'm the parent, I'm gonna be like, dude, don't ever stress about a fucking detention, especially if I'm taking you to school. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna tell your fucking principal it was my fucking fault, and you're not gonna get a detention. Boom. Oh, okay, I-, I thought you meant like, don't you know, fucking shut up and take the detention. Is no, what- no, 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 it's no, where no. I thought you were going. I was like, no, it's the no, mom's no. fault. I was like, all three of no, them no, are that's, mom's fault. That's okay. what I'm saying. Like, yeah, if, I'm, okay. if I'm the parent, I'm like, <laughs> I'm telling my kid, like, dude, don't stress out, bro. I'm the one. Yeah. It's like it's on okay. me, and I'm gonna go in and tell the principal okay. you're not getting it. That that, that okay. was my okay. Yeah. I was I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not an asshole. Well, you're, you're like this little bitch needs to know. Mom's got enough going on. She doesn't need to deal with this shit too. I was like, wow. <laughs> but right, like if you're the mom, you'd be like, dude, just yeah, chill you out. go in and talk. You're like, hey, don't get my kid at the. But but also for your yeah. sake, because like the kid's stressing you out yeah. about being late to school, you'd yeah. be like, dude, just chill. Don't yeah. worry, <laughs> it's fucking school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> So now she's leaving the school, and she's on the phone with her lawyer again, and she's like, hey, I could really use uh, having a hell of a morning. I got fired. Had yeah, some, and he was like, I got some advice or something like that for you. Had, and- some, had some guy road rage on me. Uh, could we move our lunch appointment up to oh, yeah, uh, yeah. up to breakfast instead? And he's like, you want to do Daro's? She's like, pancake therapy sounds great. You mean great. breakfast to lunch. I think you said lunch to breakfast. I meant lunch to breakfast. Can we move our lunch appointment to breakfast? Oh, do it earlier yeah. than later. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. My bad. Brayden, I told you. I know everything about this movie, and I'm not going to be wrong this whole episode. Well, I was thinking because she was already late that they would be now pushing this appointment later. Nah, they're moving it up. Ah, they're moving it up. Fuck. Fuck out of my You're face, right. dude. You're watch, right. the, watch the movie again. All right? <laughs> I need to watch it again, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> So and I'm trying to piece the shit together and I'm just like butchering he, it. He sends her like a like an invitation, like calendar invitation. They have like a shared calendar. Probably it's her lawyer or whatever. And it's uh, pancake therapy at Daro's. Mm, and she like good. she like smiles and then looks she's like, oh, I got to get gas. Goes and gets uh, goes to the gas station, fills up and then goes inside, gets cash out of the ATM for some reason. She gets, yeah. looks like like 100 bucks uh, and then goes and grabs. Here's here's why I start to have a problem with her. Stressed about money, all that stuff. The lawyer brought up on the phone had his best friend, but does it for free. Uh, she buys a smart water. It's like four fucking bucks for that smart water. Yeah, it's uh, four forty three, three dollars and sixty five cents. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why I know that. And five um, Powerball quick picks. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, what? Just, what is she doing? throwing money away. Yeah. Just throwing, like, oh, I'm so stressed. Maybe I'll hit the lottery and all my problems will be solved. Yeah. Like, that's just wasting money. And the total, so quick pick, Powerball is $2. The total is thirteen sixty five. Mm. So, yeah. Smart Water said, my math, fucking crushed it. Yeah. thirteen sixty five, three sixty five nice. for that Smart Water. What was the tax in, in, New, in New Orleans, though? Were you, were you? I don't know, but so you don't tax, uh, lottery isn't taxed. Uh-huh. So it's two dollars total. David so the so, smart water. So, fucking so the smart water total is three sixty five after taxes and everything. Yeah. So she pays for it and then looks on the like screen where they have the security cameras out by the pumps and sees Russell Crowe's truck parked right behind her car, and then like goes and looks out the door, sees that he's just sitting in the truck, and then she's just kind of standing there for a minute and she looks at there's someone else checking out. And the cashier and then looks back out and they're like, you're all right. She's like, uh, no, I, ah. she's, she's like confused. She's like, I think that truck's following me. And they're yeah, like, she's, huh? And she's yeah. like, we, we exchanged words at an intersection a little while ago. And I think he followed me here. And the cashier goes, he road rage and you, huh? You want me to call the police? And the guy at the counter is like, no, nah, it'll take all, it'll take all day before they get here. Yeah. I'll just walk out with you. And she's like, no, no, I couldn't put you out. He's like, I'm going out there anyways. And he was like, wa- 
He says something to the cashier, like if something weird happens, then we'll call the cops or something like that. And yeah, that's he's he's like, I'll I'll walk out with you. I'll get his license plate number, and if he follows you out of here, we'll call the cops. Yeah. Give him the license plate number. Which I mean, maybe just play it. Safe. I actually maybe really play am- it safe. Call the cops. Stay in the fucking store, and just wait for the cops to get there. Yeah. All well, she all she has to do on her schedule for that day until her son gets out of school at like three thirty is go have fucking pancakes with her buddy. Yeah. You're like, you know what? I don't might have, as well play it safe. I don't have anywhere to go. Please call the cops. I'm not leaving this store. Yeah. And, and even like yeah, I, I agree with you for that. But also like I do like what they still ended up doing with the scene anyway. Like I, I thought that it was believable and that is what would for happen sure. more so in reality. But what ended up happening at the end of the scene is so let's not finish. Yeah, the I'm scene not exactly. We, yeah. yeah. So, but th- this is like I I really enjoyed this part because it made it seem very realistic. And then yeah, but we'll get into it. So the guy walks out with her. She's like getting in her car. He's like, I'm gonna get the plates. Gets the plates. Comes up to her. And he goes seven eleven TPX seven one one TPX. So gives her the plate. Uh, she, that's not important, but it's just something that stuck well, with me. Well, remind me well, of that too when you'll need later. The, you'll need his plate at some point? Just to bring up a point. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she starts to drive away and the guy starts talking to Russell Crowe in the car. He goes, smart move, stay in, man. Yeah, he can kind of tell that the guy has like a bad look on his face and that. Yeah. He's like, smart move, stay in, you know, just cool off. He's like, I got your plate up here. If you follow her, I'm going to call the police. And he kind of, at this point, walked a little bit in front of the car, of the truck, of his truck. So Russell Crowe kicks it in the drive, starts driving at the guy, and the guy's, like, running away from the car, like, trying to get out of the way. And Russell Crowe, like, they make contact, and the guy's up on the hood of the truck. Yeah. And then he slides off into the street, and, like, a Volvo or something just comes through and fucking crushes the guy. 100%. Just pancakes him. And then Russell Crowe, like, he... He starts going after Rachel. Yeah. What? What is? It, are you further along in the scene? No, no. The is only this where you want even that was still believable, and that was that was straight. What I is it coming up? No, no. It's it's already here. So okay. the the woman inside, even though she didn't know the license plate, even though there's another point I want to make about the license plate farther down the line, even though she didn't know the license plate, I'm sure they got cameras. What it was like a Shell gas station or some shit, you know? Like, yeah. I'm sure she could have been able to get. The cops, and I understand this is probably, you know, every, there's traffic everywhere, but I just felt like very quickly there probably could have been more cops involved, at the like even at this point. But I, we don't see her, I don't even think, call the cops. No, we, we see her scream in the store. And she like freaks out, right? I mean, like, I imagine she called the cops. I can't imagine. She's yeah. like, man, that sucks. But we well, don't ever see that. I got, I got gas and soda to sell. So like I, I just can't imagine that's yeah. what she did. So then we're now we're at the we're in the uh, girl's car, Rachel's car, and she notices that he's behind her and she starts freaking out and she goes to reach for her phone. She can't can't, she can't find, find the phone. phone. Can't find the phone. She gets into it and then like it's oh there's bumper to bumper traffic everywhere. She's in traffic. He's right behind her. This and he's is just what I hate. He's not like smashing it hard. Well, right like, before this, fuck, he shows but, that he, no, yeah. he no? did not, Braden. I thought this was the point. He right? did not. You're going you're to try and debate me on this? Right, but, right No, you're wrong. Her. It's later. Okay. It's coming up. He's, like, banging into her car, banging into well, her and car. Well, let me say this. So, they're in bumper-to-bumper traffic, like like David's saying. They're in the middle lane, too, between. So, it's not just bumper. Like, all the lanes are super close to each other. They're all going one way. Everyone is, like, eye line to each other, like, within a couple feet. No one can fucking notice that this fucking huge truck is ram like you know i don't want to say like over the top hitting this car but like definitely hitting it hard enough to where both the cars you know shake when they hit type shoot to where like if you're two feet to the right or left like you're, you're noticing yeah, this n- happening nobody she's screaming for help oh, yeah, and, like, she's screaming too and like, and, bloody like, murdy. and like people are on their phones in the car just not looking like they're yeah. texting just not even paying attention to her like yeah. nobody notices it. it's wild <laughs> that, that part killed me but but so he, he does that a little bit, and then traffic. Which, and by the way, if you're Rachel, just ditch the car. get out of your car. Just ditch the car. Yeah, ditch the car. Run forward. Run like ten cars up, and be like, call the police. I'm that, staying with the biggest dude around. Yeah, that truck is back there. Seven Eleven TPX. 
He's following me. He keeps ramming my car. Yeah. He just had a guy fucking murdered. This guy's but out you're of right. his This mind. is Rachel's fault. Yeah. It's absolutely. Yeah. Everything is Rachel's <laughs> fault. Um, so he's banging into her. And then, like, traffic clears up some, and she's able to get out of there. And then he's chasing her. There's some cool, like, some cool drive-in chase yeah. shit. And then at one point, she's up ahead. And then he catches up to her, and he's on the right. And he just pulls up. She's looking for her phone this whole time. And then he pulls up and just holds... He has her cell phone, and he kind of, like, waves at her with it and then points forward, and there's, like, a bus pulling out that she's about to hit. So she, like, cuts a hard left and goes down a one-way street going the wrong way, almost hits some people. And then there's this black girl in the street that she almost hits, and Rachel slams on her brakes. And the black girl's like, what the fuck are you doing, bitch? This is a one-way street. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's like, oh, you're sorry? Fuck, you're sorry? Learn how to motherfucking drive! Like, she's screaming at her. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Whoever the actress was did fucking phenomenal. Rushed it. And I, and I would love to think that the director was just like, just improv it. Just improv it, just go. I hope. You know, like, this isn't scripted. Like, she literally almost hit you. You're in the middle of the hood. I how hope- would someone in the middle of the hood react if they almost got hit by this car driving the wrong way? I hope they didn't do this on a closed street, and that just happened. Like, they almost hit that actual lady, and that's how the lady they, responded. They, they, the camera guy was just in the car, and they're like, I hope just fucking like, oh, keep, keep rolling. Keep going. And then they come to her after, like, you got to sign this thing. You are in this movie. And they're like, Rachel, 100% great you're in job this movie. Yeah. staying in the yeah. fucking character. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Rachel drives around, and she parks somewhere. And then we see Russell Crowe walk into Darrow's. And he's looking around, looking around. And then he sees... The actor who plays Liam McPoyle on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He sees him, like, sitting at a table with a bunch of, like, papers and shit. And he's like, that's that's my guy. And he walks up. He goes, are you Andy? I love the way he walked in, too. Because he, like, you, you, you see him walk in and he is just staring at everyone. Like, he plays it really well. He also, he also like, put on, like, a... Like a jacket and, like, combed his hair a little bit. Like, he kind of presented yeah. himself a little yeah. better. Yeah, he great. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think he put the jacket on because he probably did have a little bit of blood up in the, yeah. the like top right of his shoulder. Like or murdered people with a hammer. Earlier. Yeah, so it's like covering the blood and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then he just the way he walks in, kind of like looks at everyone because he doesn't know who. What's his name again? What's the character's name? I think Andy. Andy. It's yeah. Liam, Liam McPoyle. Yeah, and then he walks up to him and says, "Are you? Are you Andy?" Because yeah. he sees him there, and there's like another coffee mug, she, I think. And her, she has a picture of him, like in her on her iPhone, uh, yeah, like on yeah. the contact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he kind he recognizes. Yeah, him. but uh, he's like, I'm. Chris Cooper. I'm a friend of Rachel's. And he goes, oh, nice to meet you. He's like, yeah, she told me to let you know she'd be late. And he's like, oh, all right. And he's like, yes, yeah, so you're uh, you're her attorney. He's like, I'm real stressed out, though. you know, with the whole, whole divorce and all that stuff. He's like, yeah, it's understandable. He goes, yeah, you never know who you're going to marry, huh? And he looks kind of just the way he says it, like uh, Liam kind of looks confused with it. Yeah. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, you just never... You're know, going through a divorce. You never know what the person's doing. What's uh, what's this guy can George? We're gonna say George. I don't know the, I don't know the ex-husband's name. We're gonna say it's George, and that's uh, I don't care if I'm wrong with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he goes, what uh, you know, what did George really do to her? And he's like, well, you know, he quit quit every job he's ever had. You know, he's just a miserable person. He goes, is that some kind of crime? He wasn't uh, he wasn't fucking around on her. He wasn't beating her or anything. He goes, no. He was like, uh, and like you can tell, just Liam McPoyle is real uncomfortable with Russell Crowe's tone and all that. And Russell Crowe can pick up on it. Yeah. And Liam's like, you know what? But I, uh, my eleven is gonna, it's gonna be real upset if I'm not there in time. He's like, uh, once you talk to Rachel, why don't you just tell her, you know, give me a call. And he goes, you know, what? I bet you a cup of coffee that I can get Rachel on the phone right now. And he kind of smiles. He's like, all right, you're on. And hands him his phone. Russell Crowe calls, and then a phone starts ringing. We cut to Rachel. She's digging through her car, and a phone starts ringing. She looks around for it and then opens up the center console, and there's a flip phone that she's never seen before. And she, I guess she recognizes Andy's number because she answered it, and she's like, Andy, is that you? And Andy's Andy's on the phone. He goes, hey, Rachel. He's like, I'm sitting here with your friend Chris Cooper. And she's like, my, my friend Chris Cooper? What are you talking I don't, I don't know Chris Cooper. He's like, yeah, you know, guy, big guy, hell, hell of a beard. He's like, just moved here. 
you guys are old friends. And she's like, no, nah, Andy, I don't know who that, uh, and as she's doing it, Russell Crowe's like, hey, give me the phone. And he's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Hands it over. <laughs> and she's like, you need to get away from him. He's the guy who road raged on me. He's a bad person. He's a psycho. He's a psycho. Like, get away from him. And he's like, and oh, now- no, I'm just sitting here with Andy at Daros. <laughs> like, yeah, just Russell Crowe just responds. And she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, you need to know what a bad day is, Rachel. He's like, you are the most selfish, self-centered fucking person I've ever met in my life. And Andy's like, whoa, 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 take take it easy. He's like, can I get the phone back? He's like, no, you cannot. <laughs> and, and he's like, look, you need to stop. Russell Crowe picks up the coffee mug and, like, with his hand around it, like, the coffee mug's on his fist side. Just punches him in the face and glass shatters like right in the nose yeah it's like it's not even it's not glass it's like a weird it's material ceramic it's, whatever, yeah, ceramic, whatever coffee yeah. mugs are made out. but it, yeah but i'm saying like it's sharp yeah. and it's gonna fuck you oh, up if it fucks his face up. yeah yeah and like he falls down and people are like whoa shit like people in the restaurant yeah people start recording on their phones this is another part that got me a little upset videotaping it i'm, I'm not stepping in the way if that's what you're getting at Dog, if if I was at there, I mean, no he, scenario. I'm stepping in there. Well, I mean, even if, I mean, I I personally would, but I'm just saying, like, if before I even stepped in, I would call the cops. I would make sure that the cops are called immediately and be like, for sure. And, and so, it didn't seem like really anyone did that though. People to me. Didn't. Well, there was one dude fucking recorded. Yeah, one of the yeah. older gentlemen, so, like a so, dude who so, actually could have done something there. So so. so you hear sirens when he leaves and the cops yeah, are no, coming. You're right. People you're called right. the cops. You're right. You're right. People called the cops. No one intervened. And Yeah. Then, that's what I was up. surprised about. Well, So he's he's holding Liam McPoyle yeah. by the tie and like he's choking up and he's like, you know, Rachel, he puts her on speaker. He's like, you're on speaker. He's like, what would you say to, to Andy if this was the last time you were ever going to get to talk to him? And she's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, oh, did last time, like, let me, no, no. He's like, well, that was a... That was a wasted opportunity, Rachel. And then takes a butter knife and stabs Liam McPoyle, like, at the base of his spine, back of the well, neck, at first back he of the fucking head. Like, oh, well, he, he smashed his head on the table. Yeah, he, he, like, slammed his head into the table, like, two or three times, and then grabs the knife and just fucking stabs just him in the back of the neck. Stabs him. He start, he's bleeding And that, he's that like was the dead. point where everyone went, went <gasps> It wasn't yeah. everything else before. People that. were gas. You're, no, you're, know, you're I'm downplaying. That. <laughs> yeah, people were reacting the whole now, time. Now let me let me say too. All the actors did fucking great. Real, real quick, before you do that, what's your issue with the phone? Oh, so I was do you think say, Russell Crowe's going to no, no, go no, buy no, no, like a burner iPhone? No, no, no. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. I missed the line where she talked about like deleting her passcode to her phone. And once when I saw the flip phone, I was thinking maybe this is like. One of those phone, like her phone, was one of those phones before an iPhone where they didn't have, you know, any lock. Because I, I, I didn't hear that that comment, and it made me think like, okay, maybe that isn't an iPhone, and okay. that's what made me think that whole thing. Okay. But now that I know that line, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and he bought a burner flip phone so he could keep calling her. Yeah, and all that stuff. Because I did, I just, I was thinking like, why, did, why is he able to go through her phone? Like, usually a person who has an iPhone, there's no one, no one really can get in unless they can like hack it somehow or something like that. Yeah. I just missed the line, so okay. my bad. Okay. So uh, he kills Andy, and he's walking out, and she's like, put him on the phone right now. And he goes, can't do that, Rachel. And she's like, why not? He's like, because Andy's dead. <laughs> he's like, why, yeah. don't you, why don't you get yourself to the news? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be video of it all over the place real quick. And I love the way she played it because it was – Almost like she, it was, it was like repetitive to where she, it was like she didn't believe it. She, she's like, put him on the fucking phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I love the way that they actually uh, acted out the scene because I feel like this scene is kind of um, would be kind of hard, like especially for her on the phone reacting to it. Like, dude, you're reacting to nothing as the actor. Yeah, and like you're playing yeah, no, that she... solely with no one else really feeding you shit. Well, I feel like Oscar had to have taught her. That kind of reaction yeah. skills, oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, good for her. She killed it. Yeah. Um. So now she's she's driving. Like she gets in her car and starts driving. He starts. She calls nine one one. She calls nine one one, and then she gets in but her car and starts th- driving. Th- I think that was something else. And unless I missed it, I don't think I ever heard her give the license plate number. Did she give the license plate number? Maybe, so we don't. We actually don't hear what she says. 
Okay. She because she goes. She starts talking, and then my name cuts. is Rachel. Whatever. I I need you to listen to me very closely. Yeah. And then that kind of cuts yeah. away from her. Okay. So okay. she might, but she might. Who, yeah. who knows? Like we don't yeah. we don't hear her say anything. Yeah. And then she's driving, and she, the burner phone gets a phone call. She answers it. It's Russell Crowe, and she's like, "What do you want?" And he goes, "You got some messages." The first one is from Doctor Whatever. She wants to move your therapy appointment up to Thursday. She better bring her fucking A game because you're going to need it, Rachel. <laughs> like, he's so great. Dude, yeah, that was the, great. That was a great line. The second one is from Principal Williams. She said, Rachel, thank you so much for doing the hair and makeup for the winter ball. Kyle did great in the quartet. Kyle, your son? Is that where he goes to school? And she goes, no, uh, Kyle is a, a friend's son. And he goes, Rachel, I'm looking at your pictures right now. Don't don't be fucking stupid. <laughs> He's so fucking crazy, guys. Dude, yeah. He, he's, like, trying to, like, make sure to see, almost, like, test her to see if she's still being the same, like, you know, yeah. playing with him yeah, or she's, being She's being honest. dishonest. She's, yeah. being, she's being thoughtless. He's like, I'm going to know. She's like, why are you doing this? He's like, you need to know what a bad day is and you need to be able to apologize. She's like, I'm sorry. He's like, you didn't fucking mean that. Yeah. yeah. He's, like, <laughs> st- he's like, there's still that faint hint of fuck you in your voice when you say it. Like, <laughs> he's just so crazy. I love him so much. I just love the way too. He like he like fucking oh he, the fuck. way he like gr- dr- grinds his teeth and his oh. jaw comes forward and it's like rage is coming He's out of his so, jaw. Guys, so like I'm crushing it on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Braden's crushing it. We're not doing him justice though. No, you yeah, need yeah. to watch this fucking movie. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, no, he but, kills it. He kills it. And I wonder. I'm like, dude. I wonder how much stress this put on Russell Crowe personally like outside the movie like i do you think I hope, he just i hope he was yelling at people in traffic and yeah, shit like, yeah, I, like i hope he carried it with him like maybe to get ready he drove for like 48 hours straight just in people. like <laughs> terrible traffic just fucking honking <laughs> <laughs> screaming so he starts uh starts scrolling through her phone and being like who's who's gonna be next rachel i killed your friend andy where do you want me to go next and she's like she's like nobody nobody and he's like, all right, well, while you think, he's like, I got your bank open. I'm going to send your husband. Oh, because he's like, I killed that scumbag lawyer. All he does is uh, all he does is try to put away good guys like me and George. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He's never better. And, and he's like, he's like, Wait, did you did you fuck him? Yeah. Let me guess. Let me guess. He, he fucks you. He fucks you personally. Fucks you financially. Fucks you emotionally. <laughs> That's all he does. He just fucks you, huh? Fuck, not her. Not her. Not or, fucks her. Fucks George. Oh yeah, he's because yeah. he's like, did you fuck him? He's like, well, he's he's fucking your husband. That's what guys like him do to decent men like me and yeah, George. Yeah. <laughs> fucks us emotionally. Fucks us financially. Yeah. He's like, I'll tell you what I can do. I can send the twenty three hundred and change you got in your checking account over to your ex husband, and every fucking cent you got in your savings account, like he's doing. He has her phone. I just like doing to think it. like maybe the husband's actually a great guy and he totally deserved this. Yeah. Like and this is like best he's case actually, scenario. Yeah. <laughs> best case scenario. And we get. A, a film from his version, and it's just a comedy. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> so, oh, look at this. <laughs> so he's like, pick a name, Rachel. And she goes, me, me, could just, just kill me. And he goes, well, that's very fucking noble of you, but it defeats the purpose. You need to learn what it's, you need to learn that your actions have consequences, Rachel. And then she's thinking, and she goes, Deborah. And he goes, What's your last name? And like starts scrolling through the phone frantically and she gives says the last name, pulls it up and says the address. She's like, Yeah, that's her. He goes, What what's her what's her sin? And she goes, She fired me. And he goes, Through no fault of your own, I'm sure, Rachel. <laughs> he's like And he's like, So you you won't you won't like go hurt anyone in my family? Because he's saying, I'm gonna go to your why not kill your ex husband? She's like, No, it's my son's dad. Why don't I kill your mom at whatever nursing home? No. Um, and she's like, well, not until I'm done with Deborah." And then he just drives off. So she calls the police and stuff. And, and she thinks that he's actually going to go kill Deborah. Yeah. So she beelines it to the school. And, and then we the, see the home, right? With she beelines it to the school to go get her to go get her son. Oh, and she goes in the school. And, yeah, yeah. And like cuts cuts through the gate. The gate almost closes. And she gets through and then we cut away. And we are at Deborah's house. Yeah. We hear some noise at Rachel's house where her brother and the fiance it's are. Fucking spacehead, dude. 
and he's watching the news and like sees all the shit happening at the diner and he's like, Hey babe, isn't that the place with the really good brisket? <laughs> um like he's just fucking out of it. And then we see a, Wait. a very nice house and the cops pull up to it and a lady walks out and they're like, Are you Deborah? Whatever and she's like, Yeah, what's the problem? Like, you gotta come with us. So the cops are there and they're they're saving Deborah. And then we hear like some ruffling upstairs at Rachel's house where her brother and Mary are. And the brother goes upstairs and he's looking around. He keeps saying, Mary, you there? Sees that a window was broken. And then Russell Crowe like comes walking from around the corner and he's holding Mary. And Mary's face is just. You guys feel that? You guys feel that dead air? Yeah. I left that dead air because this right here, this is where in the podcast, the recording just stopped on Monday. Braden and Br- it took Bra- Braden sits across from me with his fucking laptop open. The recording stopped right there. And then 51 minutes later, oh, I was probably like Braden goes, hey, no, stop. Like, I'm on a roll. I'm just firing on all cylinders. Like, hey, stop, stop. And I think he's doing it's gonna be something dumb that like I skip that he's like, No, it's really important that we say this. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, 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 shut the fuck up. I'm gone, I'm going. He's like, No, you gotta stop. It hasn't been recorded <laughs> since we were an hour and nine minutes into this. And I was like, Well, uh, what the fuck, dude? I was like, I need you to play. I need you to play what we left off at and he plays it. I'm like, dude, that was like mid that was like mid movie. I was like, That's so far back. <laughs> We've gone through so much since that point and he's like oh <laughs> he's the kid was he was all shoulders he's just like i i don't know man the, what what are you gonna do what are you gonna do so there we go guys yeah we're back bad. at you we're, we're recording this on a wednesday night luckily i mean you guys already listened to our our top 20 north american wrestlers of all time and, and what a treat uh, i mean no no let's, let's not act like that's better than Better than like having this podcast on Monday, like it was promised to them. Let's not act like they got the better end of the deal <laughs> because we released the fucking three hour one that was supposed to be on Five Six King Sports. By the way, Braden, that's cutting in. Who's that? That's Hoff's there's, fault. There's mon- Oh yeah, it's Hoff's fault. It's fucking yeah. Let's blame Hoff. Yeah, let's blame Hoff. Actually, I haven't heard from him a couple days. We need to text him when we're done with this. He never yeah, responded think, to our text uh, the other yeah, day. Yeah. Is he okay? <laughs> we got to text him, see see if he's all right. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, wow. Throwing yeah. some shade my way, Hoff. I you know, see you. You text him right now? Yeah, I'm going to text, text him Text right him right in the group chat. Just yeah. be like, you, you good? Yeah. You good, man? Yeah, I'll yeah, let you guys, guys know so, if he says anything. So this is, uh, this is where we're picking it up. Mary's face is all fucked up. Fucked up. Russell Crowe walks in. He goes, oh, you must be Rachel's brother. Must be Rachel's brother. I think Todd's his name. I don't. I don't know, guys. I'm further removed from watching this movie, and it's Braden's fault if this isn't <laughs> as good as it could have been moving forward. So, like, Braden apologize. I don't. I don't. I fucking crush it the first time. We're gonna be honest. I'm so fucking entertaining. It's gonna be good the rest of the way. Yeah, you're gonna be entertained. Shut up. Shut your fucking mouth <laughs> Fuck over you, there, bro. <laughs> Shut your mouth over there. It's gonna be good the rest of the way. But, like, it might not be as good as it was. We'll see. Yeah. So he's like, you must be Rachel's brother, Todd. And he's like, who who the fuck are you? How do you know my sister, Rachel? And Russell Crowe says, well, your sister, Rachel, seems to think that I'm the biggest fucking piece or I'm the most insignificant piece of fucking shit on the face of the earth. Guys. Russell Crowe had a 30-second interaction with this woman way earlier in the movie. That's it. That's it. And he is now just murdered people, and he's at her house telling her brother that, you know, your sister thinks I'm just the most insignificant fucking piece of shit in the world. He's like, and you know what? She's right. My life has been fucking pointless to this point. Every pointless job I've had, every pointless relationship... So I'm just, I'm going to go out in the blaze of glory here. <laughs> like, you're, like, if you're Todd, you're like, what, dude, what the fuck happened? Like, yeah. What, like, what is going on? Yeah. Todd, Todd's I'll- sitting there. He's holding the knife. And he's like, dude, dude, just just give me, just let Mary go. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna. And Todd's like up against the wall holding the like, kitchen knife out. And Russell Crowe just starts 
ramming Mary's body into the knife that Todd's holding. And it's like... Way too many times. Yeah. And, you know, Todd's back is against the wall. I mean, he's scared shitless. I get it. So he's just holding the knife out. But, like, after... Especially after the first time. I mean, you're probably moving the knife. Oh, first time you're like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry, Mary. I'm so fucking sorry. Like, you're like, oh, my God. Todd just stands there holding the knife. He's like, oh, uh, what are you doing? Oh, now she's dead. She's got fucking, like, five stab holes. Oh, and the last thing he does, too, he takes her head and fucking rams it into his face. And, like, I think it hurts his nose or something like that. But Yes, it fucks Todd up. Yeah, yeah. And then throws her on the bed, and she's just fucking dead. Done. Done. She's done. So now, uh, Rachel, she is, she's pulling into the school. Yeah. Barely makes it to the gate. And before she gets out of the car, she gets a text on the burner phone. And it's a picture of Russell Crowe with her brother. (laughs) And she calls. And she's like, you said you weren't going to my house and you were going to Deborah's. And he's like, well, well, surprise, I guess. Like, like, uh, Like, you, you. I murdered your friend earlier. You think I'm not going to lie about it? Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. it's, you're shocked that I lied to you? Come on, Rachel. Yeah, as if, as if that's like, yeah, that's yeah. where the that's where he draws the line. Oh, let's see. Is it Hoff? Is it Hoff? I don't know. It could be. If it's not Hoff, you can turn your fucking phone off. Oh, uh, it's not Hoff. Turn your fucking phone. No, off. No, no, no. We did get Hoff. He said, um, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." What's up? <laughs> be, like, be like, we texted you a bunch the other day. And you nothing. Yeah, all right. we texted you about a podcast that you were in. This isn't an everyday thing for you. Text you about a podcast that you are a focal part of. We're like, hey, that's where well, we're putting you know, that up. He's now. like, well, he's, you know, I did nothing. my, I did my, you know, I did my part. So you know, like, what else is yeah, there to you know, up, say or do? Showed up, I fucking crushed it. Talked about the Undertaker. He did, I'm, yeah, I'm he did bounce. crush it. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, he was great. Yeah, he was great. It would have sucked if it was you and me. Yeah, you not knowing anything about wrestling like since 2006. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it would have been a garbage podcast. <laughs> I still think I had the best picks, but you, you know. didn't. You'd Mick Foley had a Ric Flair. I'm never going to forgive you for that. I know. You know, what Ric Flair went on record saying about Mick Foley. Guys, we're going off the rails, but it's okay. You know, what Ric Flair went on record saying about Mick Foley. What did he say? He said Mick Foley is a glorified stuntman. Ric Flair is spot on. <laughs> I love Mick Foley, but he's spot on. He's like he's a glorified stunt man who isn't in the same conversation as me. He didn't say that last part. Ric Flair is spot on. Ric Flair, second greatest wrestler of all time. But did he push the envelope like Mick Foley did? Yeah, he went down on a chick on a on a train recently. Yeah, that was See cool, that? Was right? Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for Rick. <laughs> all right, so he's on the phone with Rachel. And he's like, yeah, I'm a fucking, he, oh, he's, so he's tracking her. He goes, you inside the school or outside the school? And she goes, I'm outside. And he said, you got three minutes to go inside, get your son and drive as far away from that school as possible. If you, if I don't hear from you in three minutes or if you call the cops, your brother's dead. Yeah. And, and you know, like we said last time, <laughs> what the fuck is the principal thinking? We haven't gotten there yet. We've got, let's get to the principal for okay, you. Okay, for okay. you, yeah. We said it last time at the right time. My bad. We didn't bury the lead <laughs> by talking about the principal before the principal makes an appearance. So she goes inside and she sees the principal. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, I'm one second away, guys. She, my bad. She tells the principal, she's like, "Hey, I need my son." The principal's like, "We're in lockdown." She's like, "Yeah, you're in lockdown because I called the police and made that happen." But look at it, and she shows the burner phone. She's like, "This man is with my brother. I have," and like he texts two minutes, Rachel. She's like, I have two minutes to get my son and get out of the school or he's going to kill my brother. And the principal is like, all right, go get the kid. And she deserves to lose her job. Yeah, 100%. If I'm the principal, I'm like, you know what? That sucks. But my job is to protect the students in this school. Yeah, well, and at first um, she was trying to fight it, and then she shows her the picture of the phone. But, but I, I, And I'd be like, like, I'd be like, I'd be like Rachel, you need to take a second. Think about this right now. Why does he want you to get your son and leave the school? You're putting your son in danger by doing this. Exactly. My job is not to protect your adult brother. My job is to protect your son, who's a child. Your son's staying in lockdown. Yeah. And you know what? And I said this last time. I'm going to say it again. Any sibling of mine who has a kid, if we're ever in this situation, don't put your kid at risk. Yeah. 
I'm already dead. Yeah. This guy's with me. He murdered your friend at a diner earlier. Just murdered just, your brother's just murdered fiance. Mary. Yeah. There's no way I'm walking out of this alive. I'd be like, don't get your fucking kid. I mean, he's killing me regardless. Yeah, he's killing. Yeah. yeah. If I'm the brother. Yeah. Expe- yeah. yeah. I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be like, don't don't you dare put one of your fucking kids in danger. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if I know, well, that's a little, that's right after. So let's get there. That's right. I didn't want to, I didn't want to. You almost did it again. <laughs> I didn't want to step my line. We would have been starting over. I don't know, like, you know, hey, are we recording this, by the way? Yeah. yeah okay, just, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> she's allowed to get her son and they get the fuck out of the school and they call, they call Russell Crowe and Russell Crowe's like, put me on speaker. I want your boy to hear me. <laughs> and she's like, all right. He puts him on speaker and he's like, ah, uh, Kyle. He's like, hey, Kyle, you there? He's like, yeah. He's like, you remember me from earlier? I'm the guy that your mom honked at. He's like, oh yeah, what's because because she told him nothing. She just grabbed him, ran, and got. Yeah, the he's car. been at school. He's like, what? Well, yeah, what's what's going on? Why are we talking on the phone now? He's like, I, I would I'm, like to think that he was going over all the worst scenarios that could play out, and now he's in it. Like, I, that's what I really wish. I would have seen from the from the kid actor. Like, I wish the director was like, listen, you've been at school all day. But you've been thinking about this fucking Oh, kid. like at school he was going through all yeah, the Yeah, he was going through all the scenario. Now he's he in the car. He didn't think it was over with the road rage thing. He's like, this guy came back. Yeah. Doing the I, whole thing. Yeah. And I wish when he got in the car, like he wasn't really surprised. He was more like uh, waiting for it. And <laughs> he's it's like, just like starts breaking down. Like, I knew it. <laughs> he just goes, what took you so long? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or, or it took you so side. long, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Or he's like, I'm going to fucking kill this dude. And he's playing the fucking the, the, the hardball right here. That would have been great. He's Fuck like, you, you, bitch. I've been waiting for your fucking ass. He's like, you think you're tough? You're you lucky? You're tough? You think you're the first person to try and kill us? You're My- fucking lucky the principal didn't let me stay in that fucking school because now you're fucking dead. He wouldn't be lucky if the well, principal yeah, yeah, be the other way he, around. Whatever. Like, Come on. Come yeah. on, dude. I'm trying to add Come on. Here, yeah, but you, you do it correctly. That's all. That's all I ask. Do it correctly. <laughs> so they're driving. He's like, yeah, yeah, I remember you. He's like, your mom needs to learn that her actions have consequences. He's like, your Uncle Todd has something he wants to read to your mom. And then there's a letter that Russell Crowe made Todd write. Or, yeah, Todd. Yeah. I have no idea what his name is. He's Todd. Yeah. That, that Russell Crowe made Todd write. And, like, Todd's reading it. And he's just like, Rachel, you are now responsible for Mary's death. Like, our whole life together, you've been the most selfish, self-centered person I've ever met. I hate you. Like, just the craziest letter that, like, Russell Crowe, 30 seconds with this woman. 30 seconds at in their cars. And this is a letter that he's writing to her through her brother. And, like, the letter ends. He's like, and now it's your fault that I'm going to die as well. Yeah, and it's like, dude, if you if you're the brother, you know that your fucking fiance just got killed by this guy, and this is like being directed towards Kyle too, the the son of your fucking sister. Like, maybe don't I don't know. I, I guess it saved his life by reading it in a way, in a sense. But like, oh, I'm I'm reading that shit. Yeah, you're reading it. You're not you're not saying shit. hey, but that's what I'm saying. Like on the phone, you would think also, you'd be also, like, saved his life. No, I mean, kind of, not really, but I mean, didn't really save his life, but like, kind of did. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Dude, we're right there. It's like- We're not even close to the end. What do you mean? So guys, what happens next is a cop shows up, Russell Crowe hides behind Todd's body, and then sets Todd's body on fire and rolls it at the police officer. The police gets two shots off, gets Russell Crowe in the shoulder- and then stays back with Todd. As far as we know, Todd burned to death there. <laughs> we find out at the end of the fucking movie that Todd's I alive. Thought, I knew he was alive Brage, that whole fucking time. And Brage time. just ruining oh, it come right on. now. If anyone no, saw that, you would know you. that he was alive No, you're point. out of your mind. No way. That's a big reveal at the end of the movie. The cop comes up. He's like, I like pulls her aside. He's like, he's going to be fine. Dude, you're out of your mind, dude. Oh, my God. First, you don't record the podcast. Oh, stop Now it. you're Look just at him. He's giving just the ending it. away. Oh, th- how is that the ending, bro? That's not the ending. That's, That's just the him that no one gives a fuck about. That's the last thing we find out about in this movie. But then they drive the to go see him. That is. That's literally the ending. But it's not like that the, is the ending, literal like ending. the way you're making it seem. So, Russell Crowe runs off. Uh, Rachel and her son, they, like, pull over. 
she throws up some. She throws up a few times in this movie, which, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. To... Yeah, you you throw it. It is stressful. You don't know how to handle it. Your body's just... Been in the car all fucking day. Yeah, you're, you're throwing up. And then gets a call on the cell phone. She answers it, and she goes, Todd? And it's Russell Crowe. He's like, nope, still me, Rachel. <laughs> just so crazy. And he goes, if it's any consolation, the police officer did shoot my shoulder up. And she goes, I hope you fucking bleed out. And he's like, that sounded sincere. There we go. <laughs> like, well, I'm starting to think, too, that everything that he is, like, expressing to her is really more so about, like, his ex-wife than even just, like, their altercation, I almost think. Like, the, the, the things about being insignificant to her and stuff like that, like, I would think that'd be about probably not, I don't know. You would think he would get enough, I guess, from killing his ex-wife. But you, you almost think that? What do you mean? That's absolutely what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, it's not yeah. from. Yeah. I, I don't think that's like a hidden thing, though. Like, that's. He's taken the husband's side in the divorce because. And he kills the divorce lawyer. And he's like, all divorce lawyers do is bring down good men like me and George. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course that's all. Yeah. This is all counter transference. Like, yeah, he killed his wife, but he's still angry at her. He's still pissed. And he's putting it all on Rachel. Yeah. Yeah, it's not her fault. The honking was ridiculous. The not apologizing at the light was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not but like, to say it's but, but like, this isn't about Rachel. <laughs> so, this is not at all about Rachel. Hoff said, "When? Big question marks. When? When what? When? When? Uh, when did we text him about the podcast and stuff? When did he not answer? I don't know. Are you, are you in? Are this is the are group you chat. doing it on the text. Yeah, this is the group chat. I don't know. You can be like, just, just look. Yeah, I, I, I think we." <laughs> and it's two. And he corrected your two. I like this guy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Fucking. All right, let's 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 finish this thing. We're, correct, motherfucker. We're all over the rest. So she's like, and and then oh, he goes. I want you to think about what it's. Your brother's dead. His fiance's dead. And now I want you to think about what it's going to be like when your boy dies. And she goes, "You're not going to come near my fucking son, or I'll kill you, motherfucker." And then she smashes the phone. And they get in the car and they start driving off. She's like, we're going to the police station. She's like, get in the car. We're going to go. And the kids, so they're driving. Oh, this is where they're driving. Uh, They say that they're heading south on I-95, but you would have had to drive for hours and hours and hours to get to 95 because they're in fucking New Orleans. Yeah. So they are not heading south on 95. Uh, Maybe they're on I-10. And she just got confused. Maybe that's it. Yeah. They're, they're heading east on I-10. Yeah. But they're not heading south on I-95. Hmm. So they're driving, and the kid's asking, how's it come up? He's like, is the iPad in here? Uh, he Yeah, because they were talking about, I think they were talking about, like, um, tracking maybe before that, because they were worried about getting tracked by him. And she's like, I'm sure he's tracking me through the burner. And he's like, well, if the iPad's in here, he could find it using yeah. the... Using the iPhone. Using your phone to track the iPad because they're, like, connected. And then she's like, oh, well, I don't think it's in here or something like that. Or she, they, and She's like, well, look around for it. He's like, yeah, I, just I, in think, case. I think he took that, too, but look around. And they just happen to find it, like, in the most fucking wedged part underneath her seat. <laughs> yeah, so he put it. It's, like, taped under the seat. Oh, uh, taped under. Yeah, so it's, like, Russell Crowe, like, hid it from her. Oh, that's smart. So, well, yeah, it was so, like, she won't find it. Yeah. But they found it, and he's like, oh, shit, it's here. He's like, should I throw it out the window? And then she goes, no. We're going to use it to track him, which is just... It's just silly. It's like, he, what are you going to do? Yeah, just go, yeah, please, throw it out the window. Yeah, This guy's a maniac. Let's keep him away from us. I have my son in the car now. I don't want to be anywhere near him. Throw it out the window. Yeah. But instead, she's like, no, we're going to track him with it. And then they, they use the Find My iPhone app, and they track him, and surprise, he's right there. Yeah, it's he's, like, what the fuck? <laughs> he's right there, and he's, like, he's right on top of us, and they're looking around for a truck. And then, oh, I didn't say this earlier. The neighbor across the street, when she left to bring Kyle to school at the beginning of the movie, neighbor across the street had a new minivan. And she goes, hey, Rosie, new ride? And she's like, yeah, we got a minivan. And she said, suits you, which I don't know if that's a fuck you. It feels like it. <laughs> like, like, it do- suits you doesn't feel like, oh, it's nice, but suits you. And it wasn't like it was, like, that nice of a minivan anyway, you know? Yeah, like it's it, was like... fine. it might have been, like, a Honda Odyssey or, like, a Toyota. I mean, like, it was yeah. nice. Like, it was, 
as far as minivans go, it was probably a higher end one. I don't. I haven't been shopping for minivans since my minivan days. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you know, that's. Uh, I imagine it was a fine minivan, but but suits you is just like a I don't know. That's a fuck you comment. <laughs> but they made a point of having Rachel look at the license plate on the minivan, yeah. and the license plate is Rosie One. And now they're looking around on 95. They're driving. They're trying to find the truck. And she looks in front of her. And it's a minivan with the license plate Rosie 1. So, But does that mean, though, that Russell Crowe just stole the car or did something to the family? I don't know. He just has the car. So the, the van was parked out on the street. And so, then was so he, like, could, getting good at hot wiring or something? Or is it, did I he mean, steal the keys? Or I mean, I... Nothing about his character would shock me. So, like, if no, he, for sure, if he knew how to hotwire a car, I wouldn't be like bullshit. No, <laughs> no way, yeah. he ain't hot- hotwired yeah, yeah. that. I like, just didn't know if I missed something or if no. They... So, so they don't show it. I, I imagine if he murdered an entire family, they're like, well, let's show that, right? Yeah, like, I, so I think he just stole, was parked out on the street. No, that he makes stole sense. It. Yeah, yeah, because he knew sense. they'd be looking for his truck. To be something seven one one TPX. They'd be looking for that truck, dude. David's got good so, fucking memory, bro. <laughs> so he's driving in that, and they're like, "Oh shit!" And then they they see a cop like up ahead of them a little bit. So they're they don't want him to know that they know he's in the minivan. So she's like, "We're gonna pass him on the left. Just don't look at him. We're gonna pass him like it's normal because they don't want to tip him off." That's like, "Oh, they because then he'll start crashing into them." He's like, "All right, well, they see me." So yeah. they do that, and he kind of tries to cover his face when they drive by. And now, like, once again, what's the point of having the fucking iPad? Cause oh, if so, oh, Because so, if, they... if he's tracking you, he's going to notice he's r- that you know on the tracker that you're right fucking next to him, too. So he sees them, and they assume he sees them. Okay, okay. They don't want him to know they know he's in the van. Oh, okay. Because yeah. he thinks he's being slick, like, I got the van, they don't know I'm in this car. Yeah, They're yeah. looking for my truck. Yeah. So, like, he thinks, like, oh, I got... He's going to sneak up on him kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And that's kind of... They're like, let's let him think that. Yeah. Let's let him think that. So they pull up, and Kyle rolls down his window when they get up next to the cop. And they're like, roll roll your window down. And the cop kind of hesitates. It's a fucking child and he's on the freaking highway, out. and he's screaming, roll your window down. The cop kind of looks at him like, huh? What are you... Down? You sure? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rolls it down. And they're like, the guy in the van behind you, that's who you're fucking looking for. He's He killed the guy at that diner. Like, that's him. That's him. Go get him. The cop kind of doesn't understand Then pulls out his walkie and starts saying something. And then Russell Crowe hits, like, hits the back of the cop car. To where he spins out. Spins out and then. Oh, right as he comes a P- to a, a fucking Peterbilt 324. Standstill. Yeah. <laughs> Just comes to <laughs> Look at that. Oh, you look at that. <laughs> that Peterbilt. <laughs> I was pumped. I was like, Peter Bell! Woo! Uh, just comes through and just, like, rips off the top of the car. Like, Dude, dude's c- dead. C- dead on impact For immediately. Sure. Yeah. Like, just destroys him. A bunch of cars crash into that. Yeah. Big pile up and Russell Crowe. Be fun to be one of those stunt drivers driving that semi through that fucking be- be Cop fun car? to do what Russell Crowe does in this movie. Oh, that I, too. Before the end of my life, I gotta do it, you know? Do you think? I just got to. But do you think he just stays in that character? Like, he shows up on set, and he's just, like, he's just breathing really heavy oh down people's God, backs I and shit. I, I <laughs> hope he did. I hope he was really taking painkillers. Yeah, right? Like, like I, I hope everything about this, Russell Crowe's like, no, this is and my life. I think life. one of the best things that the makeup and makeup artists did in this movie was his sweat. His sweat, <laughs> his, like, little uh, perspiration or whatever it's fucking called is fucking great. No, oh, he's, he's just sweating. Guys, because, like, Russell Crowe is, like, 280 pounds in this movie. Yeah. He, he is big. Like, don't think gladiator, master and commander Russell no, Crowe. No, like, no, no. like, think fat old man. Yeah. Getting angry and doing nonsense. Like, that. that is what his character is. And, dude, like, that man had fat, like, this man was, like, he almost looked big bone at this point. Like, his fingers were really big. Everything about him. Yeah. He carried the fat. He looked like he has been a fat person, like, his whole life or yeah. something. Yeah. You would like, never think that that man was the gladiator. Yeah, never. Yeah. <laughs> never. It's amazing. It's amazing what he did here. Yeah. So that's happening, and now he, like, finagles around, and he's behind them chasing after him, and the son uses the iPad to call 911, and this is where they're like, hey, we're heading southbound on 995, which they're not. <laughs> yeah. Um, And they're like, oh, we're sorry. They're, all units in that area are responding to a crash. You're going to need to get yourself to a safe location. 
And like, no, no, the the reason for the crash is why we're calling. This guy's falling. She's like, yeah, but we need to. And then the iPad dies. Which it's like, you wouldn't think to check the percentage of the iPad. Well, I mean, what are they? I wouldn't. No. That just takes time. Like, what do you, you got to call 911? What do you? No, no, but but kind of like before that when they're like She'd getting have a tracked. Charger in there. No, oh, yeah, but just to see, just kind of know. You know, but it was track him. We see I mean, a the, cop, and the then bigger like, oh, thing man, is, call nine one one. She should have threw out the iPad. Yeah, I mean, but first things first, you toss it. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, drive slower if you think he's right in front of you, and get off the exit. Yeah, like that was crazy. So they missed the exit for the police station because they they saw the one cop. Yeah, so they up in the lane ahead of them and thought like, like there's a way, like you you can make him miss the exit and get off. Yeah, and exactly. Fuck's he gonna do? Yeah. Like you, Rachel gold. messed that up. Yeah, horrible mom. Yeah, horrible mom. How great would it be though if <laughs> one of her Powerball tickets? Just hit? Oh, like, how great man. would that be? I that was for- part of the movie. Like, I completely she, forgot about. She that. hits on the Powerball. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're driving. Or he steals it and he and he hits it. <laughs> oh my god, so much better. <laughs> right? So much better than my idea. Yeah, he wins the Powerball. <laughs> just takes his money, moves to a different country, like lives a great life. That'd be great. <laughs> That's the ending. Oh, Mara, what a twist! <laughs> um, so he, so Rachel's. Yeah, like, he's like right behind, right behind them now. The iPad's dead. Um, so earlier, I I don't think we touched on this when he was on the phone with his dad. He was like, "Hey, Dad, me and Uncle Todd had this this new Fortnite strategy. You want to hear it?" And Dad was just like, "I don't fucking care." He didn't say that. He's like, "Oh no, no, bud." He's like, "That's fucking gay. I don't care about it." <laughs> And like that, that's how that ended in that conversation. And then after their initial interaction with Russell Crowe, then they're driving and the mom's like, that was fucking crazy. My son's scared in the back. And she's like, hey, tell me about that Fortnite strategy. And he's like, you don't care. And she's like, no, I want to learn and you care about it. So I'm, I'm interested. And he's like, all right. So basically you go somewhere that you're familiar with. Uh, and I, I don't play Fortnite or, but it sounded like a normal strategy. I don't, you go somewhere that you, you're, you, you're familiar with, with yeah. And one then, of you distract the enemy. The other comes around with a golf cart and runs them over. Yeah. Sounds like it would work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I've I, never played Fortnite, but me neither, even but in like call of duty or some, you definitely want to yeah. go to places that you're more familiar with. Or Donkey Ex- Kong. You know? Yeah. Any, you gotta be familiar <laughs> with the maps, <laughs> especially if someone's like chasing you or something like that, then you can, you know, hopefully have a way to. You know, uh, okay. finesse them and then confuse them. So that's that's his Fortnite strategy. And now they're driving, trying to get away from Russell Crowe. And in the is this when they're in the neighborhood? Is that what we're talking that's about? The, they're heading to that. Yeah, Mom, okay. like they get off the exit like, hey, we're going to go to grandma's house. It's like we're going to lose him in the neighborhood because I also don't know. Cause we recorded this fucking two days ago. <laughs> so I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know if we talked about this. They were saying how. But uh, the grandma needs to be in assisted living because she she was getting lost in her own neighborhood. And the brother's like, I get lost in that neighborhood. It's like a it's like, like a, a big maze. bowl of spaghetti. Yeah. You didn't say maze. Well, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. But that's what they mean. He said it's a big. <laughs> 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 He's like, it's like a bowl of spaghetti in there. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And <laughs> so she's like, we're going to we're going to lose him in there. So they cut go into the neighborhood and like just start driving around all over the place and they lose him. Yeah, they lose him. They get to grandma's house. She uh, she has her son go in and he hits the silent alarm, and then he goes up and hides in the. It's like in, there's a closet, and then there's a little like it's crawl like, space yeah. door in the closet. And, like he crawls in and he has he has like a golf club with him or something. It, it was like something that I think you stir a fire with. I think it's like yeah, yeah like a fireplace. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like exactly a fire poker. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he had grabbed one of those and is up there hiding and we don't see where mom goes. We see Russell Crowe. No, 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 we do. She went, or no, we don't. You're right. We, you're we right. don't see where mom goes. Well, no, no, I thought we did when they we don't, first. We don't see where mom goes. Um, I thought we saw her grab. We, we saw her grab her candy cane scissors. We don't see where mom went though. Oh uh, yeah. We yeah. just see that. No, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I thought, I thought we saw her grab some. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. We see Russell Crowe driving around. He this fucking looks crazy. Like, if you <laughs> saw this guy, the way he's driving... Like, it's a nice neighborhood. The way he's driving around, he looks crazy. 
He's like hunched over the steering wheel, like looking around the windshield. If you saw this guy driving in your neighborhood, you're calling the fucking police. Dude, his jaw. 100% you're calling the police. He looks out of his mind. He's covered in blood. <laughs> it's almost like someone bullets, tweaking on like, like drugs where they're like lower jaws, like way well, in the is. front. He's, he's been fucking crushing painkillers. No, this you're whole right. Movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like exactly. He's so like, guys. Russell Crowe is doing an amazing job in this movie. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, yeah. That is why this is my favorite movie of all time, because this is a bananas character, and Russell Crowe just crushes it. Yeah. He's so like, I'm going to take it out the ballpark. <laughs> he, he gets it. Oh, my God. He clears, clears everything yeah. <laughs> out of the park. <laughs> um, so but he's driving him. around looking crazy, and like he stops to kind of compose himself. He pops some painkillers and just... Takes a minute and sits there. And then he looks to his left and he sees fucking Rachel's car sitting in the driveway oh, next to him. Perfect timing. Yeah, like what are the odds? Yeah. Um, and then we see in the neighbor's driveway, like across the street. Like we behind see, him. We see a black car. It's on, it's just on the other side of him. Yeah. It's on like the driver's side. Mm-hmm. But the camera angle, it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's behind him, the camera angle. Cause uh-huh. the camera's coming from where Rachel's car is. Yeah. And then the black car just peels out and starts moving and just crushes the car yeah crushes like hits on the driver's door the car flips Mm -hmm. a normal person would be dead as fuck but brayden (laughs) is russell crowe a normal person nope no he is not he's out of the car before rachel even gets to his door yeah rachel and she gets out quick fighting around the world he's making movies (laughs) he's making songs and he's fighting around the world (laughs) she gets over his door he's out and like hid already. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> comes over and just like bashes her head against the car and just fucks her up. And then he's on top of her. And my point, he's on top of her and he's got his hands around her throat and he's looking into her eyes. He's like, "Look into my eyes. Look at me. You're gonna see me every day. You're always gonna see me. And you're gonna think about what you could have done differently to save your boy. Uh. Like he is so fucking crazy. All she did was honk at him." <laughs> All she did was honk out about a light and then refused oh to God. apologize for it. And I get it. She should have apologized. <laughs> she should have given him a courtesy tap. But this is fucking absurd. He's killed three people, he thinks, and now he's gonna, <laughs> and now he's going to go kill the son. <laughs> Just to uh, teach and he's, her and a he's lesson. Playing, and he, yeah, and he's playing mind games this whole time. So he's like lying to Rachel, making it seem like he's not going to hurt the son in the beginning. And now he's like, I'm going to kill your fucking son. Yeah. Which oh, is crazy. Like, you can think about what it's like to lose your boy. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Think about what you could have done differently. Yeah. He's uh, soaking so, up the lines too. So, so he's he's going he's in the house and he oh he's so great. He's calling me, he's like, Kyle, it's Officer Wilson here. He's like, Your mom sent me in here. She's hurt, but she's gonna be all right out there. Just need you to come down, son, and we're gonna take you to her. And Kyle's kinda like, Oh fuck, like like he's fuck, considering it. it? And then, like, some time passes, and Kyle doesn't come out, and Russell Crowe's like, all right, maybe he's not in the house, and he goes to leave, and Kyle, fucking clumsy little bitch, like, knocks something over in the attic, makes a noise, and he's like, oh, bingo. Yeah. There we go. So, like, Russell Crowe starts to move. The little crawl space door opens, and Kyle just screams as loud as he can, and Rachel's like, it's me, it's me, it's mom. Well, it's also because his mom, like, just fucking, like, kind of aggressively just reaches her arm in at first. It seemed like, or just like popped her head and, in and aggressively. Just her whole body went. Well, yeah, she like yeah. Came, she came in pretty aggressively. She came, she came in hot, but you know, yeah. like she did. Uh, I'm assuming she didn't see Russell Crowe in the house. No, yeah, 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 you're right. So she's like, "Is my son alive?" Like, fuck. Yeah, I, I, I'm I really just saying, there. like, if I'm the kid, I'd freak out too. But um, so she screams like, "It's okay, it's mom." So I'm like, "There's no way it's okay." I just made so much noise. He's like, "It can't be okay." Yeah, like I was so loud just now. And then Russell Crowe comes in. He grabs Rachel, drags her out. Like Kyle tries to hold on to mom, but. He can. Like, Russell yeah. Crowe's a monster in this movie. Yeah. Uh, he, he fucks Rachel up a little bit, goes in to get Kyle. Kyle starts hitting him with the fireplace poker. And he just fucking grabs he, Kyle. He, he fucking, he, he eats the hits. Like, Kyle's, like, hitting him on the back of the head. Like, he's just eating it. Dude. And then he grabs the kid, drags him out. Uh, Rachel, like, comes in and, like, starts fighting him. Yeah, so, Rachel keeps trying to, like, yeah, she keeps, save the day. Yeah. She gets, but she's very, getting fucked up. Very reminiscent of in the movie Fear. Literally. When Mark Wahlberg is just beating the shit out of the whole family in the bedroom. Like, it, it it's so much like it. Even when, so he's fucking up Rachel. And then Kyle runs over and with, like, barely looking. Russell Crowe just backhands Literally him. Literally backhands him. Fucks the kid up. Yeah. And then, like, he, so he, 
hits Rachel a few good times, throws her on the bed. The kid's he, like kind of knocked like, out. At she's this point. out. He hits the kid a few times and then has like a cord from like a light. Looks, I think it looks was. Like, yeah, like a like a light you're plugging like, in. Like the on the wall. lamp, he ripped yeah. it off and he wraps it around his neck and then he brings him over to a mirror. And he's strangling the kid to death, and he's making him watch it in the fucking mirror, guys. He is making the kid watch himself get strangled to death. And I would love to think that was not in the script, and that Russell Crowe took the liberties. He's like, there wasn't even a mirror in the room. Russell Crowe's like, well, we got to have a mirror in the corner. And they're like, why, Russell? Why? He's like, how else am I going to make Kyle watch himself get strangled to death? And you need to like, learn a lesson. <laughs> they're like, and they're like, yep, we're, we're getting you a mirror. Like, that is crazy, Jesus, Russell. Yeah. So he's doing that. As he's doing it, Rachel, like, screams, hey! And he turns around, and she stabs her candy cane scissors through his left eye. And he falls down, like, Kyle's done. He's like, she grabs Kyle, gets him away, and then he's just, like, a fucking juggernaut. He's just like, Rawr! like, starts to get up. And then she <laughs> says... How's this for a fucking courtesy tap? And then kicks the scissors the rest of the way through his fucking head. He's dead. <laughs> That's where he dies. He's done. He's not coming back up. To think like like a real life scenario, I would love to think that anyone in the world has the wherewithal to say because that's a fucking awesome line oh dude i i would have fucked it up this whole (laughs) thing is based off her not giving a curse tap how's this for a fucking courtesy tap hours later many deaths later just kicks it through his head (laughs) so he's dead she grabs kyle kyle sobbing and now there's cops and ambulances and shit at the house and the cops like yeah we got your statement i mean this is, this is your mom's house, and that guy's here, and he killed some other people. Do they definitely self defense? Uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah. I mean, you guys are you guys are good to go. Like the medics checked you out, you're clear. And then another cop comes over, and he's like, "Can I talk to you, miss?" And like he says something to her off to the side. And then the big reveal <gasps> is that she comes over to her son and goes, "Uncle Todd's gonna be okay. We can go see him at the hospital." Oh, yeah. This, this is where we find that out. <laughs> Not when he was set on fire and that's where we left and Russell Crowe said he's dead. <laughs> All right, my we bad. find out now. So they go, they get in a the car, they're driving and she starts, to, she like goes at a stop sign and then starts to go and a car like cuts in front of her. They almost crash and she hits on her brakes and she goes to honk and then she doesn't. And Kyle goes... Yeah, good thinking. (laughs) And that's unhinged. Guys, it is a 10 out of 10 perfect fucking movie. I could not recommend this more, even if I tried. I tried to recommend it more earlier. And Brayden's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't (laughs) recommend anything more than this. 10's as high as it goes, David. Yeah, There's nothing higher than a 10. I was like, can I give it an 11? He's like, no, that's crazy. Come on. He's like, that's crazy. Yeah. You're giving it a 10. I That's really had it. to talk him down. I mean, he was he was you know he was trying to talk up a big game, and I was like, David, we gotta we gotta tone him back just a little bit because like there's other movies too, you know. And it's like this, this is a twenty. But if we I can give it a tw- if Braden would have let me give it a twenty, this movie would have got a twenty. But we need a cap, you know. We need the cap, so I That's had to fair. cap him. Caps are caps are there for a reason. Mm-hmm. I get it. One more thing I want to touch on, guys. So Braden claims that he did not know the ending to this movie. Braden has also told me that he's seen clips of it and this and that. And, like, he's kind of watched it but didn't, like, sit down, watch it start to finish. We're about midway through the fucking movie. As Russell Crowe's driving, there is nothing that would tip anybody off to this being the ending. And we're watching it with Nick, who has not seen any of this movie. Nick's never watched it. He hasn't seen clips of it. Nothing. He watched the trailer the day before and was like, that movie looks great. Yeah, I'll watch it with you guys. (laughs) Nothing at this point would tip Braden off to what happens. And Braden just goes, he's going to get stabbed in the eye. Oh, 100%. So I can actually like explain that. it, too. 100%. So I've never seen the movie fully, uh, especially the ending. I, I got a little upset at certain parts uh, in the beginning, and it just made me not want to watch the whole thing. No offense, David. But um, but the reason why I said that— Because you connected too much. Well, no, you— uh. 
It's all the trust issues. Your, no, your trauma <laughs> with Corbin uh, growing yeah. up, and that's you were like, I can't, this is, I can't do this, man. Yeah, it's too, it's too much. It's bringing up too many emotions. Exactly. Yeah, Russell Crowe, the resemblance. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, the one buddy at that point got stabbed with the butter knife in the back of the neck, and the the super sharp narrow scissors literally led me to believe that okay well she's gonna obviously use these scissors at some point they, they don't they never show anything in a movie for no reason there's always a reason that they show anything in a movie so these being the way that they are and him already getting stabbed in the back of the neck me thinking i'm like all right well she's definitely going to use it on him where is he going to get stabbed i'm like definitely the eye that's what my mind went to i don't believe you and so, you know what i think huh I think you intentionally stopped the recording because you knew this was going to get brought up and you didn't have an answer on Monday. <laughs> and you're like, let me, let me buy myself some time to, to come up with a reason why I knew he was going to get stabbed in the eye. See, this is why David is, is – He's not good for, or, he, or I guess he is good for me because he, he just knows everything. I know it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's called, I fucking know it all. <laughs> he calls me out on everything. I always think I'm going to be slick and sly, and I'm like, ah, no. he's not going to know. Hell no. No one else knew. My Hell whole no. life. Yeah. No one else knew. But David somehow you'll, knows. You don't fucking keep yes men around, Braden. Oh, that's that's true, right? You don't just keep them around. It's working for Jake. <laughs> Jake Paul, if anyone, if anyone didn't know what I was referring to. Yeah, Jake. What, he has buds? That's just called him by his first name. Like, it's Nick. You're like, what's <laughs> Nick? Like, come on. <laughs> Guys, that is Unhinged. It is a 10 out of 10. It's available for free on Amazon Prime. So when you look it up on Amazon Prime, it sh- like, look through every option of Unhinged you can find because they try to show you ones that are three ninety nine to rent. There's a free one there. Yeah. Make sure you find the free one because it's free on Amazon Prime. You can rent it. Everywhere else you they rent, they do movies. do that. It's kind of silly. It's the first, like the first three. No, there's like four. The first two cost money. The third one's free, and then the fourth costs. Like, oh, oh, oh! Like just throwing it in the middle there. The fourth, like, like, oh, oh, you had you had Prime. Oh, we didn't know. Here it is yeah. for free. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, guys, I I could not recommend this movie more. And guys, unhinged. let me say too, I actually enjoyed it a lot. If you love thriller thrillers psychological thrillers this is a fucking phenomenal psychological thriller and russell crowe kills it knocks that apart so like what i said after i watched this movie i said like when i watched for the first time i said there's absolutely no way that russell crowe will win an academy award for this movie but he totally should at least he was nominated he wasn't i thought he was nominated (laughs) for the academy award now for the uh, for the People's Choice Award. Oh, it's the yeah. fucking people. I said, I said there's absolutely no way Russell Crowe wins an Academy Award for this movie, but he absolutely should. I don't think there's going to be an actor who does a better job this year. And even... And I stand by that. Russell Crowe did an amazing job in this movie. He should be at least nominated. Yeah, then like, like seven people get nominated for Best Actor. There's no way seven actors... Did a put better, better performances than he did here. Well, especially during this past year, yeah, they haven't released as near as many movies, yeah, because of the pandemic and everything. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could totally see him for sure winning. And if he's not nominated, then it's kind of disrespectful. I could not agree more. Could not agree more. So, guys, next week, listener of the podcast, fan since day one. Nice. She's been listening. Heather Forte. Woo-woo. She uh, she DM'd us on Instagram. Shout she, out to Heather. She wants us to do the 2003 thriller Identity, starring John Cusack, Amanda Peet, and Ray Liotta. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be doing that next week. I've never seen it. I've honestly, Until she sent that to us, I've never heard of this fucking movie. Yeah. I don't know if you have. No. Yeah. So this is going to be great. It's, uh, it's an hour and a half thriller mystery identity. And if you guys want to watch it, if you want to get ahead of the game, it's free on Pluto TV. Or you can rent it on Vudu or Amazon Prime Video for two ninety nine. Or if you're rich, you can rent it on YouTube or Apple TV for three ninety nine. Did I say two ninety nine? Yeah. Amazon? Okay. Yeah. After I said three ninety nine there, I was like, did I say three ninety nine twice? No, no, you said two ninety nine. Well, there first. we go. Yeah. So guys, there we go. Watch it ahead of time if you want. Look at that. Definitely subscribe and download all our episodes. Follow us on Instagram, at 5-6-Kings. That's F-I-V-E-S-I-X, 
K I N G S. Guys, thank you for listening to me break down the greatest movie of all time. Seriously, we don't do it justice. Go watch this fucking movie. You owe it to yourself to watch this movie. And you owe it to Russell Crowe. Fight around the you owe, world. You owe your lives to Russell. You don't even know it, but everybody owes their life to Russell Crowe. Yeah, it's like Carmen with... Uh, he's he's saved us countless times. You, you guys don't even see the shit he's doing behind the scenes. It's like Carmen with Mel you Gibson. You owe it to him. Yeah. You owe it to him. Oh, Braden's phone's ringing. Yeah, it's, it's not important. Nothing's more important than this, David, than this podcast. What if it's... It's not. Right. If, it, if it was Hoff, we'd have him on. I, I would say, answer I was it. Say, you got to answer. Yeah. yeah that's that's where right my mind went. I was like, what if it's Hoff? Yeah. Like, yeah no, no, no. I, I know it's not Hoff. Yeah. If it was okay. Hoff, he'd be on here. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for continuing to like, download, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll be back less than a week now because it's going to come out Thursday morning. We're going to be posting this. What a treat. So this is, yeah, we'll see you in like, yeah, what a treat. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I love. I love doing the podcast four fucking times in one week. This is going to be the fourth time we've recorded in one week when we do it, man. Look at that. What a treat. Guys, Fight around the world. <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. Peace out. Whoa. You didn't stop recording, did you? No. When are we going to be posting the new podcast? We're going to be posting it on a Monday. And is that like, uh, do we do it a lot on Mondays? Yeah, I think we Oh, that's right, because we do it every motherfucking Monday. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace out.